Tick tock, time to rock. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to everyone who's watching from all over the world. It's your friendly neighborhood philosopher here, D Wood, and with me now is the apostate prophets. How are you doing, AP? I am doing very well, David. Thank you for asking. How are you doing? Man, I got one question for you. Uh, when you were a Muslim, did you think that Muhammad's marriage to Aisha was the most beautiful thing ever and did it make your heart melt? Nope. I preferred not to think about it. That's weird. Because according to the videos we'll be watching, it's the most beautiful thing ever. And this is this is even worse than when I saw Sheikh Yusuf Estes and he was asked about Muhammad and Aisha and he goes, if you have a problem with Muhammad and Aisha, do you also have a problem with the story of Romeo and Juliet? Because, <laughs> because it's another beautiful love story. And Shakespeare couldn't even dream up a story as beautiful as the story of Muhammad and Aisha. You're talking about a 54-year-old dude banging a nine-year-old girl. It's so romantic. Um, What's your problem? So anyway, that was uh, Sheikh Yusuf Estes. And then... Uh, <laughs> He's got nothing on Rosie. She's like, oh, 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 oh if, I, if I could only have a relationship like that, it's so beautiful. It's like, what the heck? What you is going on? Try it. Oh, please don't try. Just don't do it. Don't do it. How about just don't do that? Don't All do right. It. So we're some weird stuff going on in Dawa, ladies and gentlemen. Weird stuff going on in the realm of Dawa. So should we go ahead and just jump right into this? Uh, I actually have two videos by her. So. Um, these came from our good friend uh, on Twitter. He's Sir White Meat. <laughs> Anyone who doesn't know what that's referring to, that's uh, Zucker Nike when he was uh, critiquing the theory of evolution, basically made up everything he was saying. <laughs> he didn't know what like Homo sapiens were, and he was talking about when and, and when Homo sapiens went extinct. And we're like, you're Homo, sa you're you're Homo sapiens. What what the heck is this? Right? It's a medical <laughs> doctor. It's a medical doctor who doesn't know what Homo sapiens uh, doesn't mm. know what that means. Um, but also he's just making up names the entire time. And it was a great survive me who said it's like it was probably whatever whatever porn film he was just watching like before <laughs> things started. <laughs> well he he said Homo sapiens went extinct like a hundred thousand years ago or something. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the great medical doctor. I'm a medical doctor. I'm a medical doctor. I'm a medical <laughs> doctor. So uh anyway, so anyway, sir Sir White Meat. Who's uh, on YouTube? He is uh, the next Zucker Nike, so that's why he's uh, using uh, Sir White Meat. Um, but he he posted the video from Rosie. The channel is Rosie's Corner. Link to her channels in the description box. Link to the both the videos that we'll be looking at. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how quickly we'll get through them. I, I have two videos, but uh, he shared a video from Rosie. Um, de giving her defense of Muhammad's marriage to Aisha. And this was uh, from a couple months ago. And uh, it was interesting. And then as I, when I went to her page, I saw that she had posted another defense of Muhammad and Aisha uh, several months earlier. But she goes in completely, kind of completely different directions with the two videos. So definitely going to look at the first one. If we have time, we'll go through the second one. As no, well. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. ES one thousand and two said that I ignored his super chat yesterday. Now this is this. Who said that? ES one thousand and two in, in the comment section. Uh, this just sounds like slander, and I'm going to contact my lawyer because I read all the super chats yesterday. So. Um, no, I saw one that you missed, so you're lying. How oh, dare you? David Wood exposes AP live. <laughs> humiliates him Humiliate. actually uh actually there's a couple super chats already let's go through these real quick and then we'll jump right into the video inshallah uh have you guys watched asli nabi animated series i've watched some animated videos i don't know what the series is called is that is are you familiar with that particular name no i only saw one episode where he apparently made a where he made a video about um about the whole Zainab inc uh, incident uh, where Muhammad, you know, falls in love with her and then marries her. And there was a part where um, where they are at the wedding dancing and he made you and me animated dancing there. Uh, <laughs> oh, the that sounds cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that sounds cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I may have seen them. I, I, may, I may have seen them. I just don't know uh, the if I'm if uh, I don't know the name of the channel, if that's what uh, if that's the same one I've been watching. Uh, let's see. 
I know AP is secretly the Jewish Messiah. Why else would he hate Islam if not to replace Al-Aqsa Mosque and Dome of the Rock with the Third Temple? Dude, don't, don't say it publicly. This is, this is secret. Yeah, plus you could get people mad. Uh, Ahmed says, if the, tra if the trajectory continues, you got to say it twice. If the trajectory continues, if the trajectory continues as it is, I will choose the cow. And fasten my leather straps <laughs> and pay my jizya with super shekels. That is good. It's a good idea. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Uthman's fake blood. <laughs> if YouTube doesn't work out for you two, there's a job going at the Daniel Hill Kikaju pre-K nursery and marriage bureau. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I, I don't think we'd be working there. Um, yeah, no, I, 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 I'll, I'll skip. We'll that. be happy to report on it, though. John West, among the Abrahamic religions, Judaism is the hard way, Christianity is the easier way, and Islam is the wrong way. <laughs> yeah so it's a they all have kind of different natures but uh islam is just completely detached from it all yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah I, I actually liked vocab gave the best <laughs> description in a in a video he did it in a in a debate and then he did it in a in a video where i asked him about it but he said uh he said i asked i said hey can you can you explain things to to new new people in star wars terms and he goes yeah he goes Judaism is like Star Wars, A New Hope. That's the, that was the first Star Wars movie. It's, it's like Star Wars, A New Hope. It, it, it introduces the characters, sets up the plot, sets up the, the main, you know, the main villain, everything, does all this stuff. And I was like, okay, well, what's Christianity? He goes, Christianity is like the Empire Strikes Back and develops the plot, moves it forward, blah, blah, blah. And he goes on how it's like, the, it's like a Star Wars, the Empire Strikes Back. And I go, what is Islam then? And he goes, well, Islam wants to be the third movie return of the jedi but it's space balls <laughs> and, uh, i thought that was hilarious i don't know if you're familiar with uh space balls space balls yeah. was a star wars yeah. parody but um that's, that's nice. i thought that was actually like like i mean it's, it's it's humorous but it's actually pretty pretty accurate i would i would say it does seem like an accurate description of things and mm -hmm. I don't, i'm not sure if he was uh, actually joking or if he was serious though because it sounds pretty that sounds pretty accurate it sounds pretty serious uh islam is actually literally just swiss apologetic says here are some super shekels as always from a christian because atheists are always broke and jews are stingy just kidding love you all <laughs> it's always funny when people can be horribly racist and then just take it back uh, Ahmed says, thanks for the advice on reading Tactics. Yeah, that is a good book. As I am engaged with my... Uh, uh, Greg Coco also has a new book out, which is next on my reading list after I finish the book I'm reading right now. So I will let you know. And uh, if it's super cool, I'll have uh, Greg Coco come on with me to discuss it. Uh, thanks for the advice on reading Tactics. I'm engaged with my uh, friend these days. This book is already helping me in my approach. I appreciate your advice as always. God bless you guys. Thank you. Uh, uh, P says, when and where is the AP w uh, debate with Daniel Pedochu? <laughs> <laughs> this Tuesday. It's going to be... <laughs> Pedochu. It's going to be this this Tuesday. So in two days, actually. Um, and it will be at... Um, let me not get it wrong. Pretty sure it's going to be 3 p.m. Eastern time. Um so that that's when it's taking place on Tuesday on Modern Day Debate, where it will be hosted. Tuesday, the approach is Israel and Hamas. That's yeah, and I'm sure we'll uh, we'll all be sharing the link ahead of time and stuff, so it won't be any problem um, yeah, won't be problem. finding. Won't be a problem finding that, but that's a good nickname for uh, for Daniel. Well, also, um, I hope this happens, but I just earlier. Um, publicly challenged Jake Shields, who is known on Twitter on, or X as a recent uh, got, um, Hamas supporter and also kind of, uh, you know, Nazi supporter and stuff like that. Who has yeah. Been oh, yeah. He's the one who's been paying. Oh, maybe the guy with the mustache got things right. Is that him? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah oh, yeah, my him. goodness. So he, he tweeted at me because I called him a Nazi uh, apologist for something that he tweeted. Which he is. Yeah, and he tweeted at me like he said, oh, so this guy is saying that he's a Jew genocide supporter or something like that. And I was mm -hmm. like, what? So I said, how about I challenge you and I will uh, make you regret all of the stupid things you have said over the months. And he said, yeah, sure, if we have a big, big platform to debate, sure. And then I immediately got contacted by, uh, by Tim Pool's um, people who said, we are happy to arrange it. That was quick. So, 
Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering if he's bluffing because there, there's two possibilities here. One, he's actually dumb enough to think, oh, look at all the people following me on Twitter. That means I have great arguments. He may actually think he can sit down and have a, an intelligent discussion and uh, make his case when he would end up exposing himself as a moron. So he may actually believe that and go through with it. But he also may, p- may be pulling like a Muhammad hijab where, oh, I want to issue the challenge or accept the challenge, not thinking that it's actually going to you know, get set in motion. And if it does... If he actually doesn't want to debate, he'll pull a, a hijab and just start making all these conditions. Well, OK, but you can't bring this up and you you can never say this. And during the debate, you can't do this and you have to wear this and you have to. And these are my conditions and and so on. And uh, until you just go, come on, uh, this is not even a real debate. And then he'll, you see the apostate prophet is running from me. This is what you're saying, but uh, maybe he will just he will completely make me look like a fool and he will prove me wrong entirely and make the case. I mean, every, anything could happen, David. Don't yep. be so judgmental. Here you go. I don't buy your goat. I will, however, buy the cow. Buy the cow. You have to, in the middle of it, switch from Jordan Peterson yep. to Mossad Hassan Yusuf. Buy the cow. With your, with your accent. Yeah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. I choose the cow. Thoughts on Gordon Nichols' book, The Quran with Christian Commentary. Uh, have not read that yet. Uh, but that might be that might be a good one to review at some point, because if it's great, then I can tell people to get it. Uh, most I've laughed in a long time the other day watching AP's reaction to that Islamic sources for you video. Would love to see him watch one of them again in the future. The other two there are funny. Yeah, we will do that. We should have shows where we just like watch like random uh, like funny videos and stuff and goof off. That's what we should be doing. Yeah. That would be cool. That would be cool. That's what um, cool people. Let's see. I dare you to read this. I dare you to read this super chat, you weakling. <laughs> that, was, that was good. Dear kids, don't be like this nerd talking about... What's SW? What's SW? SW? I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like someone's going to say, you idiot, SW is blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, I, I should have seen that's that. That's how I feel every single time when I when we are live and I'm reading something. But I, I feel like when we are live, uh, something in my brain is mm-hmm. off and I can't think of it, everything immediately. Whenever I see the initials, I always have to ask my kids, I'm like, hey, what's this mean? Or even like even like words. Uh, like, like, like I, I remember it, was, it was a couple of years ago. I was like, hey, Blaze, this dude keeps calling me Chad. What's that mean? Oh, he's, my like, God. He's, that's like, that's... he's like, no, it's good. I was like, oh, I thought I was going to have to blast. Because I'm like, do I blast him or not? SW is Star Wars. <laughs> People are pointing. Oh, out. Star Wars. Oh, yeah, we're sitting here talking about Star Wars. Don't be like this nerd talking about Star Wars. <laughs> oh, we just talked about it here forever. We were just talking about it. Guys, uh, notice we're not nerds enough to just treat it as uh, as an initials there. See? We didn't even notice what it means. Yeah. Nabi Asli has a video with AP dancing in Muhammad's house. Yeah, AP just said that Mo was uh, upset because you wouldn't leave and he wanted to be alone with his new bro. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> that's a good D1 AP, thanks for exposing the dangers of Islam. Once I was thinking of joining, and then I became aware of the apostasy law and Daniel Hakikaju, but Muslims like Isa Kabir are great. Yes, yes, he is. We'll probably have uh, Isa Kabir on at some point again so that uh, AP can apologize to him for referring to Sufis as goofy Sufis. Goofy Sufis. I will apologize to the goofy Sufi for saying that. Yeah. Thoughts on Ayman S. Ibrahim? Um, I got one of his books. I didn't read it yet, but I've not heard anything but good things about him. So, but I will, I, that, that's, that's another, that's another book that is on my list of uh, reading. So I will get to that sometime, uh, sometime in the coming months. And then, yeah, if, I mean, if he's got good stuff, I'll happy to share. My, oh, matter of fact, I, I got his book because I was flipping through his book and I saw he had a presentation of the Islamic dilemma. He didn't call it that, but he, but he broke down what the Quran says about the Bible. I was like, gosh, this is what's, this is what is needed. So, yeah. Uh, Rebecca Kaufman, nope, no comment. Thank you, Rebecca. Alona, Alona, Israel have Iron Dome. <laughs> Israel has the Iron Dome. America has the Iron Balls team, AP and D. <laughs> <laughs> Very flattering thing. Which you. would you rather have, the Iron Dome or the Iron Balls? How about both? Yeah. How about no? You know, how about both? How about both? How about both? Uh, it's from Eli here. Love you both. We love you too, Eli. Really? Hey, Eli, I'm coming down, uh, coming down to your house in a couple months to finish up I the project. You. I, finish I up the project. 
Rumi says, as we speak, Nadir Ahmed is having a debate. Stop running from him. Yeah, we always run, everyone runs from Nadir. We can't stop running from Nadir. It's just, just everyone runs from Nadir. That's what that's what people do. Uh, David Wood is again running from me after I humiliated him last time on the He's still running. On the, the seed of the something something in the Bible. <laughs> he he was stuck on that on, on that one issue uh, at some point. Uh the smallest seed or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what a pathetic thing to argue. About. It's pretty lame. Uh, we need D. Woods beats Anthony Rogers lyrics and AP's background singing in that nails on a chalkboard German dialect. Yeah. Joking. AP got to poke the lump of sales. I don't know what you're talking about. We, we, we could we, we could have some sweet jams. Yeah. Uh, message you on X. I messaged you on X about Netherlands. Oh, AP, I messaged you on X about Netherlands uh, Quran burning. I will check. I will check it out. I will check uh, it out. Uh, Addison wants to know, when's AP going to become a Christian? Is it today? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. You got. You heard it here. And if AP doesn't, then we will re- everyone should reject atheism because it produces nothing but liars. <laughs> Is it true that the black stone is the angel Gabriel's butthole? <laughs> I promise I'm not from AP's channel. You're obviously from AP's channel. That's I, that's pretty. I think that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, definitely. And people kiss it. Isn't that weird? All right, couple. Got to jump on this video. Can't wait for the debate between AP and Pikachu. Daniel's career will be over. He will be gotcha'd. Whoever wins must hand over their goat's hand in marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Jake Shields is an imbecile and David AP would ruin him. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, you, you, you've got you've got Muslims who are even if they're spouting nonsense, they are capable of, you know, sounding uh, sounding persuasive to people who don't know what they're talking about. And I but I don't I have no idea if Jake Shields can uh, can make a uh, make it make a, what he's saying sound good. Based on his tweets, he sounds like a lunatic. It's going to be it's going to be very good. It's going to destroy me, I think. Uh, D Wood, how's the family? And AP, I heard you were sick. Yeah, my family's good. Uh, my wife, you were sick. My wife got my least favorite kind of dog in the world. Did not ask me, uh, but got a poodle. Uh, can't stand them. Although I have to say, the poodle is way cooler than I thought it was going to be. I thought they were just like the lamest. Well, they, I, th- I still think they are the lamest, uh, but uh, like softest, weakest dog. This thing is like a ball of terror. I was like, you should have named him Terror, because I mean, instantly he just, just as soon as I see him, he runs in and just attacks me. It's a uh, so anyway, it's cooler than I thought. Uh, D Daniel Hakikachu expects that nine month girl to look like his chin. <laughs> the heck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sid Dave says. Sid Dave says if Muslims. <laughs> Sid Dave says, if Muslims could go back in time to meet Muhammad, do you think they would stop Muhammad from marrying Aisha? I wonder. Nope. Would not. No. Uh, they, they might stop people from uh, keeping records of it so that we couldn't use it against him, though. Why ruin such a perfect marriage? If the trajectory continues, if the trajectory continues, vocab, five-minute video reacting to Black Hebrew Israelites rap diss about vocab. Vocab is great. I am not a Calvinist. Uh, yeah, maybe we should check that out at some point. All right, let's jump into this video. You ready? Any fi- any final thoughts before we jump into this powerful, powerful response? No. Everyone has been waiting for an hour now for us to jump into the video, so... Yeah, well, it's weird. I kind of, uh, I kind of like goofing off for the few, for the, you know, for the first part because... People are still uh, still jumping in before you actually start your 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 powerful powerful sense shattering content. You know what I mean? And that's always my excuse when I'm late. Uh, sometimes I say I'm just doing that because I'm because of out of consideration for all those people who take a while to join. So, mm-hmm. All right, so here we go. Life. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rosie from Rosie's Corner. Uh, I'm not sure when she converted or I guess reverted, as they say. I looked at her channel. She's got, I guess, a couple dozen videos. I'm not sure when they started. It looks like the, it looks like uh, all or most of her videos were all from last year. Uh, so I'm guessing recent. And she puts like new convert after every video title and stuff. So 
she's really hitting it from that angle. And uh, anyway, I'll just let her introduce this topic here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everybody, and welcome back to Rosie's Corner. So I made a post recently asking which concept made more sense. And it was the concept of one God who is indivisible, no partners, no children, versus three gods who are physically separate, and one dies for three days, but they're still one. A AP, <laughs> AP, you're an atheist. You have not heard this before from her. Uh, based on your, 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 you don't believe in God. You don't believe in the Trinity. You have no, you have no, uh, you have no reason to defend Christianity. But she just described the doctrine of the Trinity mm -hmm. as three gods physically separated into different different beings. One of them died for three days, but there's still one. Uh, is that, according to your expert position as an atheist, would you say that's an accurate definition of the doctrine of the Trinity that she's responding to there? No, it's not. It's completely false. It's, it, but here's what I can say. It's about as accurate as Allah's description of the Trinity in the Quran, right? This is what's funny. Uh, so uh, everyone who's watching what Rosie just did, that's called a straw man. She's uh, attacking a position that is not actually a position. It's not actually the position that she's responding to. She is either clueless, which is weird because she claims to be a former Seventh-day Adventist, and Seventh-day Adventists know what the doctrine of the Trinity is. Um, so she is either completely ignorant, that would be a shocker, or she is deliberately, uh, she is deliberately misrepresenting the doctrine, whichever that case may be. What we can say is he or she would just be following the pattern laid down in the Quran, where Allah says that the Trinity is made up of God, Jesus, and Mary, who are three separate beings, and they just work together as one, which is the definition of the Trinity according to no one ever, and yet Allah. Uh, that's his refutation of the doctrine of the Trinity as he uh, he gets Jesus to deny that that's what he that's what he taught. So interesting that she's actually starting off her video like this. I mean, um, it, it's one thing not to know. Right. And then uh, another thing to have this completely uh, wrong perception of something and to basically run with that, to present yeah. that uh, as, as a basis to then build arguments or build build some reasoning uh, on it. Plus, um, where did she say that she did that? Was it a poll that she did? Uh, she said she had uh, posted it somewhere. Let's go. Let's just go in bed. Go back. Uh... Everybody, and welcome back to Rosie's Corner. So I made a post recently asking oh, she just says a which post. concept made so, more sense. So it could be YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. I was going to say only goats, but I have no reason to make fun of. I, don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I will make fun of someone like a Kikachu or some of these other guys who are really creepy into creepy stuff. Uh, I, have no, I have no reason to. I will criticize her points. I have no reason to criticize her. Well, I don't know. She's defend. I mean, this is she's literally defending child marriage. So, OK, but th th this is a this is a video that is that is recent. The one that we're watching right now. This is from a couple months ago. Yeah. OK, so. Um, uh, so it looks like then that um, that the poll that she made is pro was probably made for a Muslim audience. Yeah, and now she's going to, I assume, go with the results of that poll. No, so, she's not, she's not doing anyway. She's just saying people started asking me about Muhammad and Aisha in response. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I, I didn't, I didn't ask them about that. Uh, yeah. So right now I have mixed feelings. Um, I usually. I'll treat people different based on whether they're nice and, you know, whether they seem sincere and whether they're trying to be accurate versus people who are being totally deceptive and promoting horrible views and stuff. And I can't figure out, I don't know if she knows that some of what she's saying is uh, horribly wrong. I'm guessing she's just really gullible. So yeah, we'll, we'll give her the benefit of the doubt and assume that she doesn't know that she's spouting nonsense for a good part of this video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, let's, let's see. So here's, here's. And it was the concept of one God who is indivisible. Who is described as a gremlin with a head and a torso, two arms uh, on one side of his body, one leg with one or two feet on it. That is the actual description. 
And guess what, Rosie? If you're hearing it for the first time, no surprise. They're not going to tell you that until later. That's the God you worship. So one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah, and uh, and they're, and they're not going to tell you that they actually have to uh, downplay how complicated this is according to uh, according to Islamic theology, because you have Allah, then you have Allah's speech, which is eternal and can appear as a person. Yeah. Um, and they're not going to tell you that Allah breathes out his spirit, who also appears as a person. So they, so there's Allah and his spirit and his word, all of whom are personal agents. They're not going to tell you that because then you might start wondering, whoa, is, is, is our theology really simple, simpler than the, than the Trinity? Uh, they also won't tell you that individual chapters of the Quran have their own personalities and can uh, and will appear to uh, speak uh, at, at the judgment for you. They won't tell. So notice it's one Quran, and yet 114 different personalities within the Quran. Assume you're going you're going with the uh, 114 chapter version. They didn't tell you that there's 116 according to Ubay Ibn Kab and 111 according to Ibn. They didn't tell you. Anything. This is all stuff you'll find out in the future. You won't find it out from your guys. You'll never hear it from your scholars. You're not going to hear it from your uh, Dawah uh, heroes. You're only going to hear it from us. And then you're going to get mad at us for saying it, but you'll find out we're right. But yeah, we'll, we'll leave all that. Stop interrupting her, man. She's trying to educate you. Yeah, Rosie, just just yeah, keep your uh, pretend uh, easy to understand, simple Allah, and then uh, tell everyone, explain the doctrine of the Trinity, uh, former Seventh-day Adventist. No children. Mm-hmm. Versus three gods. Three gods. Who are physically They're separate, physically separate, so they're all physical. And one dies for one three dies days. One dies for three days. They're still one. They're still one. Got that? That's a doctor of the Trinity, post, according to Rosie. Three gods. That was all that was in the post. But somehow, for some reason, people kept bringing up Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his marriage to Aisha. Peace and blessings be upon her. And do you know, peace and blessings be upon her? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Treating her like a prophet. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> uh, try saying, uh, may Allah be pleased with her, Rosie. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so she's wondering why people would bring that up. And I, I, I have no idea where she's posting this or what people's motivations are. If I had to guess, I would I would suggest that it's, it's Christians saying, huh, you are just uh, you're just making up stuff about Christians, uh, about Christianity and attacking that. So let's go ahead and ask you about this stuff. That's what it seems like, Rosie. Stop, stop, stop arguing. You believe in three gods. That's what she said. Yeah. OK. Rosie said it and her God said it. So who am I to <laughs> disagree? <laughs> um, I don't know where exactly they saw this in the post that they thought, you know, I have to bring this up. Um, but since y'all wanted to bring it up. I'm going to talk about it. All right. So let's get into it. Sweet. All right, guys. So first of all, to start off, I think that the prophet's marriage with Aisha is probably one of the subjects that's mostly talked about by non-Muslims or mainly Islamophobes, right? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think? Why? Anyway. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I mean. You've got a bunch of double guys. When you are a believer, you usually don't want to talk about things that make you very uncomfortable. Yeah. And notice why, why do we talk about Muhammad and Aisha? Uh, It's because for many years, you guys were running around saying, this is before before your time, uh, Rosie, but those of us who were around back in the day, one of the main arguments, you go back 15 years, 20 years, one of the main arguments for Islam was the amazing, perfect moral character of Muhammad. The amazing, perfect moral character of Muhammad. Uh, I can pull. Uh, matter of fact, uh, uh, if you want to do something fun, AP, one day we'll uh, we'll just go through the section of towards understanding Islam, which was one of the which was probably the most popular Dawah book that they would hand out until a brief illustrated guide to understanding Islam came out. But towards understanding Islam, he just goes page after page after page describing Muhammad, and he is uh, compared to this giant. All other men of all other times are mere dwarfs by comparison. Like he's so great. It's just going at it's going it's going page after page after page about how perfect he is in every possible way, and he's like a diamond in a in a in a pool of of coal and stuff like this. It was. Uh, it just goes on and on. Anyway, that was the argument we were confronted with. And so we responded to it by raising issues about Muhammad. And then we found out you guys really don't have a good defense of a lot of these issues. And so you've got a problem here. You're claiming that Muhammad is this great moral guy. The Quran is claiming that he's the pattern of conduct. 
and it's actually something that has a real world impact, meaning that child brides are still being married in the Muslim world and that's bad. And so that's why people are bringing it up. And also it's just a response to your prophet. Mm -hmm. We good? Yes. All right, back to Rosie. So, you know, people always ask, well, why did you prophet uh, marry somebody of such a young age? Okay. How old would you have liked her to be? <laughs> 51 years old. <laughs> what a question. How old would you have liked her to be? We would have at least liked her to have gone through puberty and developed physically into a fully grown woman. For me, that's kind of the minimum. Yeah, I just, you, I just you, don't. You, you can debate to be a little child. Yeah, yeah you can debate the the details. Uh, so she's going to go on about eighteen. Who who are you to say eighteen? I ag I agree. It, it's it's there's something a little bit arbitrary about saying this is some magic number. It's not some magic number. So there's there's some room for debate on that issue. But I would say at the very least, just for health concerns and psychological concerns. She should be through. She should be through puberty and finish and finish the process of puberty. That doesn't mean she starts puberty. Starting puberty is different from completing puberty. Puberty is a transitional period that lasts several years. So finish growing into a woman and not be a little girl anymore. What well, eighteen? Because that's the age here. Do we know what the term ethnocentrism is? So think about what age you would like Aisha to be, or you would have liked Aisha to be. Are we going to say 18? Sure. Let's go with 18. All right. Well, ethnocentrism is judging another culture solely by the values and standards of one's own culture. And, and we are guess all guilty what? of this. It doesn't apply in this case at all. That's it. Because that's not what ethnocentrism, uh, if you want to use it as a, you know, uh, as, as a criticism would be applied for. You wouldn't say, uh, well, you know, in, in this culture over there, you know, what, what they do is um, they torture children from the age of five till the age of 10 and also rape them before they become uh, adolescents. Once they're adolescents, they cut off their fingers uh, and then, uh, you know, let them become adults where after uh, they are considered grown up. If we look at that, we don't say, oh, you know, we should, we shouldn't, we shouldn't judge that because it's just a different culture. No, that would go for other things like trivial behaviors, tri things like, um, I don't know, the, the, the way you, the way you dress, mm -hmm. the things that you like to eat and Correct. all of that. Mm -hmm. Things like these can't be resolved with a criticism of ethnocentrism. Yeah. So, so when, yeah, when we're saying, when we're saying, Hey, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't have sex with a prepubescent girl. That's not just saying, oh, you know, this is our culture here. It's yeah. actually harmful. So when you're talking, so notice what she's saying here. If she's saying you're judging another culture by the values and standards of one's own culture, the values and standards that you would have to be saying we are applying here are values like don't harm, don't do something that is needlessly harmful to a child. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? That we're just shame, shame on us for applying that standard. There are certain things that we say, okay, everyone should agree. And as AP were pointing, I mean, as AP were pointing out, I mean, is, are there any limits to, to this for you, Rosie? I mean, if you came across a culture that was just, you know, torturing children for fun and this was a game and that's what they did. Uh, and you'd say, and you say, Hey, that's wrong. We need to stop that. You'd say, no, 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 that's their culture. Isn't it? By the way, isn't it amazing AP? Cause this is basically her case throughout this video. Again, she goes in completely different directions for her two videos defending, uh, Muhammad's, uh, marriage to Aisha. But isn't it amazing that like the group that's it. Everyone has to adopt our culture in the entire world. And you, I mean, if you become a Muslim, look at her, look, look at how she's dressed already. Uh, she, she has to dress and speak and walk and talk and think like a seventh century Arab, right? This and, and Islam has rules for everyone else. So these, the rules are, are to eventually be applied to the entire world that these guys, when their position is remotely criticized, suddenly become cultural relativists. Whatever, hey, whatever's true for your culture is true for your culture, and what's true for a different culture is a, uh, true for a different culture. And under no circumstances should you judge another culture. 
the group that judges other cultures more than any in any other group in history is the one that appeals to cultural relativism when they're criticized. Isn't that interesting? I find that fascinating, man. It's fantastic. It's dope. It's dope. But let's see if she's got anything else. Well, like, for example, I am Dominican. And if you look it up, listen, Dominican. You're Dominican. So that's your culture. Why are you dressed like a 7th century Arab? Why? I'd like to know. Because that's not your culture, right? Did someone tell you your culture is wrong and you have to dress according to this culture? Shame on them. That's ethnocentrism. I've right, been in an ongoing battle with Puerto Ricans saying we're better than you. Or they say we're better than you. Dominicans are better. Um, Pretty racist. Um, but you see this in so many different cultures. This place thinks that they're better than this place. This place thinks that they're better than this place. America thinks they're better than everyone. Right? All right. So, so because of ethnocentrism, Oh, America thinks we're better than everyone. Who are you to judge our culture? <laughs> so notice, following her, so she, she's pointing out different cultures have different values. Yeah, uh, so Pakistan is the uh, animal porn kingdom of the world, kingdom of, uh, uh, of the world, right? Who are you to judge them? Yeah, so if we were to say, hey, you guys should stop watching all this uh, camel and goat and donkey porn over there in Pakistan, that would be... Uh, that would be shame on us. In other words, not shame on them. Shame on us for telling them what to do. People question other cultures based on their own standards. Why do you think that your standards are better? Why do you Why do I think my standards of not penetrating a prepubescent girl are better than a culture that believes it's perfectly acceptable to penetrate prepubescent girls? That's seriously a question. Yeah, so th th there is a distinction that we that we make, um, which we both basically just pointed out. But uh, if if we're talking about something like child marriage, uh, we're talking about a practice that uh, is not just culturally or by experience um, understood to be to be bad. It is um, scientifically proven that it is harmful. Um, on a, on a medical basis, on a uh, psychological basis, and on on many other levels. I mean, just just look into the the the, the literature. Just look into the the history of uh, Islamic scholarship, for example. We recently talked about it. I recently read an article um, analyzing um, child marriage in Islamic history and how Islamic Islamic scholars have analyzed it. In Islamic history, it was a big. It was a big issue where um, Islamic, Islamic scholars had to advise men on when they should start having sex with their child brides because it would happen uh, every every so often that they would have sex with uh, with 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 little with little girls that they were married to um, when the little girls were not ready for marriage physically, which, which would result in permanently damaging their, um, their, their, their organs, their, their sexual parts, and even their behind plus. Yeah. There were, yeah. Uh, uh, I'll spell it out. These are called, these are called fistulas where you, you tear the girl. Uh, that's the concern with the prepubescent girl. You can tear the girl, and the the Muslims would describe it as two holes becoming one. So you rip the vagina hole down, and it joins with the uh, with the anus, and the two holes become one hole. And then, of course, you have permanent problems with uh, with sex and the safety of the girl. And of course, the the way around that the way around that um, Rosie is to not have sex with little prepubescent girls. Precisely. And on top of that, also, of course, there are also other issues like that, uh, even if that doesn't happen, for example, which is a horrible thing. And it's actually mentioned several times in Islamic history, in Islamic scholarship in books. But even if that doesn't happen, uh, there, there, there are still immense risk of otherwise harming those girls. 
uh, harming them along the way. Um, early pregnancies, which are, will permanently harm them and uh, hinder their 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 development. Uh, of course, the psychological aspect of it: um, ch- child marriages result in significantly less happy individuals when they are uh, adults, and so on. Um, inspiring philosophy in this debate with uh, with Daniel Kikich, who went through much of the data and the scientific aspects. So. Um, uh, always worth recommending. To yeah, forward. and uh, so I've, I've debated this too. I've debated this issue too. And according to the research, um, the, basically the, the, the younger the girl gets, the more problems uh, arise, not only for the, for the girl, but also for her baby if uh, she gets pregnant. Uh, but rates of toxemia, sepsis, obstructed and prolonged labor, hemorrhaging, and fistulas all increase significantly for uh, basically the younger the mother is. Uh, the babies born to these mothers have higher rates of infant mortality, premature birth, and low birth weight. So when we say, hey, if these are the problems that are associated with getting a girl, uh, having sex with a girl, uh, before she's, you know, before she's had a chance to develop. So notice like obstructed and prolonged labor. Why? Puberty is a process that starts. And, you know, over the few years of puberty, the, the little girl, her hips grow, her birth canal winds. These are things that happen over a period of years. If you just jump in there and have sex with her, uh, and, and she gets pregnant and her hips haven't widened and her birth canal hasn't widened, you get you get you get problems and Ro- Rosie, I don't I, I don't know if you actually know what you're defending here. You're saying that's fine. It's worth the risk. It's worth the risk to the girl to be banging a, a, a little girl. It's just worth it. And if you if you object to it, you're evil for imposing your values on another person on another person's culture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, and and it's it's actually good. We've tried. We've given example. We've given examples of like you know what if you were torturing kids or something like that. But something that's a uh, very popular in the topic of discussion in the Dawa community right now. Uh, Rosie, if you went to a different culture and they trans, they transitioned all kids. They transitioned uh, all five, six, seven year old boys to be girls, and they transitioned all five, six, seven year old girls to become boys. Would you think that's, oh, it's your culture, so I, I cannot I cannot raise any sort of uh, issue with this. Would, 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 would that be your response? Because that's what that's the that's the that's the moral system you are telling us that we should all adopt right now. Cultural relativism. That's the that's the you're defending cultural relativism as a defense of having sex with little prepubescent girls. This is what your religion has compelled you to do. You know the the Bible deals with um, deals with the issue of, of human sacrifice um, because it was a <laughs> it was a practice in uh, in ancient times and enemy cultures. Um, but hey, if if you wanna if you wanna go by by Rosie here, then maybe um, you know who are you to judge? Human sacrifice shouldn't have been condemned because it was just yeah yeah, yeah I mean that's a that's a good that's a good example. And you could you could even defend. I mean you could. You could do this with the Old Testament, the New Testament, or even the Quran, right? You could say, hey, wait a minute. They, they were pointing out, you can't have human sacrifice. You can't do that. That was like a justification for going and subjugating that other cult. It's that bad, right? Mm-hmm. And you, AP, you were pointing out, there are things we can disagree on. There are all kinds of things that we can say that is relative from culture to culture. There are certain things where you just go, no, that, that's, that's, pre- that's, wrong wherever you, that's wrong wherever you are. Um, and so it like in the uh, so you had the New Testament time after after Christianity started spreading um, infanticide, female infanticide was pretty common in the Roman Empire. You just you got a daughter. You didn't want her. They throw they throw her in the river parallel to um, the time of Muhammad when infanticide, female infanticide was you got a daughter. You didn't want her. You, you throw her out in the, the desert and let her let her die. And notice Muslims. Muslims will point to that and say, see, Muhammad changed that. It was a common cultural practice. He came and put an end to it. He put an end to that practice. It's the same way the Christians put an end to the pra- end of the practice in uh, wherever Christianity spread. But notice, according if if we were to if we were to take Rosie seriously here, we'd have to say, shame on Muhammad, shame on Muhammad for stopping female infanticide. Who was he to judge that culture where that was acceptable? Exactly. Shame on him. So <laughs> someone could make a video. Rosie declares Muhammad is evil for judging culture. <laughs> wow. This is Islamic Dawah. And uh, um, again, guys, this is something that's just going to come up over and over and over again. 
the the dais will say anything. It doesn't matter how inconsistent or how hypocritical it is. Uh, would they ever accept as a defense of anything that Islam is criticized? Would they ever accept, ah, but you know, we're a different culture. We get to do what we want in this different culture. No, it's, if your culture is wrong, then we have to impose Islam on you. Uh, suddenly, cultural relativism is the defense of Islam. They would never accept it for anything else. Interesting. Anyway, let's see what else she says. It's going to be powerful. Your standards Please. are better than other cultures. Why do you think your standards are better than other times, like other eras? No, notice, I mean, she, she, why would you think that... <laughs> Rosie... Why would you think that anything in Islam is better than anything than anything? For All I ever hear from Muslims is, oh, this culture was so messed up until Muhammad came. OK, so that means one culture can be better than another culture, right? In fact, in the okay. other video we're going to watch, in the other video, she's saying, oh, and, and women were so oppressed before Muhammad. And then he came along and gave them the right to vote. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't say it without laughing. Then Muhammad came along and gave them the right to vote and he changed everything. But notice, he, okay, that's idiotic nonsense, but suppose we granted that. It's true. Wait, are you saying that's better? That's better? It's better than the previous culture? I mean, look, look at her faces. <laughs> Who are you to judge? Do you seriously want to say that your culture could be better than another culture at another time? I mean, it's like she is, I mean, thoroughly, thoroughly a cultural relativist, seems like. And she's using it to defend the least relativistic system in the world. I mean, this is Islam actually has to be imposed on every culture in the entire world to make it all one culture, seventh century Arab culture. Wild stuff. One culture, wild, indivisible. wild stuff. Yep. Yep. Indivisible. Yep. So I want us to think of the question why don't Muslims eat pork, right? And you guys are going to be like, oh, she's going off topic. She's not even answering. No, the we're question. not. We're going to assume you're this making a point to tie into it. OK, yeah, why okay, it. don't Muslims eat pork? This is like a because Muhammad said don't eat pork because he was copying yeah. the Jews. But go ahead. Question yes. that I get asked a lot. But here's the thing. Imagine that you were surrounded by people who didn't eat pork. Would you still ask this question? Have you ever asked yourself, why don't Muslims yes. eat dogs? No one around you eats dogs. So why would you be curious about that? And what I'm trying to say with this is when a nation is strong and established, the weaker nation looks up, looks up to this uh, nation's ways or um, they look up to what their values are. So because we are surrounded by a culture that eats pork we immediately ask well why don't they eat pork everybody okay do we understand this point um she's saying that some of these issues but that that would arise with islam are only an issue because you have a surrounding culture that, that teaches something about this uh if you're if if there are two cultures and neither one of them eats dogs it's not going to be an argument between them about eating dogs if you have a culture where one of them eats pork but another doesn't eat pork then there you, you might have this raised as an as an objection and so she's going to now i would i would put those more in the category of things you were talking about where you can have you can have cultural relativism you can have different different ways of doing things uh, in different parts of the world. We, we tend to not eat horses over here. We tend to eat, not eat horses, whereas in other parts of the world, they they eat horse meat and so on. Um, and so she's going to, but she's going to apply this to Muhammad and Aisha. So just like one culture, maybe this culture doesn't eat pork and this culture does eat pork. And so it becomes an issue. Well, if you have this culture that doesn't believe in having sex with prepubescent girls and this, uh, this smaller culture that does believe in having sex with prepubescent girls, well, then it becomes an issue between them and they start asking asking questions. Okay, thank you for the enlightenment, Rosie. <laughs> else eats pork, why don't they eat pork? But if you didn't eat pork, if nobody around you ate pork, you wouldn't be asking that question. I would. Yeah. And this all ties back. I, I like to end this on the battle. <laughs> she, I would totally ask you. I don't know why she's not more popular because she's she has like the perfect uh, features of a Dai. Like, I mean, notice 
she's she's no worse than Ali Dawa, right? I mean, like say spout complete nonsense, be completely inconsistent in everything you're saying, but sound really like arrogant and condescending while you're saying it. It's like perfect con you know combination of features. What, what do you think? I'm I'm sorry, I have to say here. Um, you might disagree with what she's saying here, and it might sound ridiculous, but I have to say. If we want to compare her to Adetawa, I must say she sounds significantly more intelligent than Adetawa. Yeah, I was trying to, uh, yeah, I, was, I just, I know we got, like, we might have some Ali Dawa fans here. Yes, she sounds more intelligent. She sounds more intelligent and better spoken than Ali Dawa. But notice, Ali Dawa, million plus uh, subscribers, and her not, even though she's, you know, a revert and w massively better looking than Ali Dawa. So you wonder uh, what's going on. Uh, and I, I think it, it might... And because sounding. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know because I'd, I'd have to see more and I'd have to check out the reactions and so on. But it might be that this magic combination of features that we see that makes someone a popular Dai, namely the ability to spout complete nonsense, but say everything in a condescending manner that that just that makes you convincing to people who are just looking for how confident you are and not actually paying attention to your arguments. It might not be as prized a feature among women. I mean, they might not like the women sounding like they're talking down to everyone. I don't know. I don't know. Do you have any theory? If, 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 this, if this was on a dial, I would be like, uh, bro, brothers and sisters, imagine, yeah, yeah, imagine, think for a imagine. second, yeah. Yo, yeah. How about, what if you were at a time where, uh, uh, let, let's say, you didn't uh, uh, eat fruit, yo, yeah? Yo, give me grape, give me grape. <laughs> now, suppose, now see, I sit here and I'm fed grapes. <laughs> By smiles to Jenna. Smiles to Jenna sit here and feed me grapes, yeah? Because that's real yeah. manly thing to do for him. It's real manly to feed another man grapes and me gobbling, 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 gobbling up the grapes, right? Yeah? So, I was gobbling the grapes and you might come from the culture where the men don't give each other grapes, yeah? And that's yeah. just like, that's just like you coming from a culture where, we, where you don't bone little girls. Yeah, so, you can't. You can't be bro. So... Yeah, Rosie, we're going to criticize. We want you to know we are going to criticize. We're going to criticize the things you say. And we're going to disagree with you. We're going to believe that you're completely hypocritical in all of this, and you're making no sense, and that this is a an absolutely terrible defense of child marriage and Muhammad and Aisha. Absolutely awful. With that said, you are smarter, a better communicator, and way better looking than Ali Dawa, who is one of the most popular dais in the world. But anyway, terrible. Uh. <laughs> but you're n n notice, and that's the thing. Notice, I mean, she's she's pretty new, and she's got this, and she's got her other video. I can't say that her defense of child marriage in Islam is any is any worse or weaker than what you you get from the rest of the Dawah guys. So, yeah, I'm starting to think that they're just. It, it's like it's like the other day when we we're going through the Islamic dilemma, and it's Fareed responding to the Islamic dilemma, and it's like, I, you know, after a certain number of years, you start to wonder: Is there? Just, do they just not? Do they have zero response to this? If all the responses are this bad, do they just have, not have a response? And it's the same with this. If these are your responses to Muhammad and Aisha, is there just no? Is there just no real response? I'm starting yeah, to think let her, that. Let her speak, man. She's talking. Okay, to... quit interrupting her. You interrupt her. So I want us to really quick. Think about the Western mentality Shame or the West. Western ideal. Like, when is the appropriate age to get married? So here in the West, it's 18 is the best age to marry yourself off. Keyword, to marry yourself off. Best? So the best. age 18 was only recently decided as the appropriate age to marry yourself off, right? Now, this is not based on any I don't even know what in the world she's talking about it's uh it's so not, that's, she, that's a she, that's a state she, that's a state's rights issue so it varies from state to state okay and she she's conflating uh she I mean she I guess she's trying to say the right thing but she's kind of uh saying it all in the wrong way it's I mean it, it, it is considered the appropriate age at, at which um it is it would be considered okay it would be considered you know permissible it's not the best age to marry uh to marry yourself off um but it, it sounds like she is going to say this is completely baseless, which is completely false. But let, let, let's see what she's going to say. Mm -hmm. Science or any studies. 18 is all. Look what she just said. It's not based on any science or any studies. It, it, it is. It is. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a collection. It's a collection of scientific 
there is a body of scientific and medical data yeah. that basically says you're better off waiting until girls are completely done with puberty. And then even then, it's better to wait a few years beyond that. And it's just, hey, th these are the these are the statistics on medical compli uh, uh, medical complications of childbirth uh, based on age. And so to say it's not based on anything, no idea what she's talking about there. So this is, the system is, uh, the research shows that at this age, um, you know, uh, puberty is commonly completed. And then there is a grace period, which is also added to that uh, to, to, to make things safe. And then ba based on that, there is, a, there, there is a, a conclusion. Okay, after this age, it should be totally safe to get married, which is why, you know, based on this whole yeah. idea, ages of marriage are established. Um, yeah. so it is based on something. Now, it, it's, it's one issue to be unaware of this. Um, but then it's it's another thing to not know this and to go out there and try to educate the masses on it. You know, yeah. Don't, and, don't do uh, yeah. So ages like 18 and so on, it's, it's just it's just it's a case of erring on the side of caution. Yes, you can. I mean, my mom got pregnant with me when she was 15. So that's before that 18 year mark. I, you know, I was fine. But you look, you look at them, you look at the, you look at the statistics and so on. And you say, we're going to err on the side. Okay. If it's, if it's more dangerous at that age, then why don't we, why don't we make that, that kind of goal a few years after that, uh, when things tend to be much safer. That's the idea. So you notice you can say that you say, ah, no, it's better erring on the side of danger to the woman and her child. Interesting. Uh, actually, we have a we have another uh, guest joining us here. Zane said, uh, "Is this live or is it recorded? Uh, it's recorded. We're not live right now." Hey, Rob, call back. I don't know why it says you're in the green room, and I don't know how to switch you over. Uh, call back, Rob. Whoops. And it's only done that one time before, where when I click on it to join, it sends him to green room, and I don't know how to fix that. Uh, hmm. Anyway, he can call back. There we go. And why does it say he's in the green room? Because he's green. Hang on. He's an amateur. Hang on. Let's let me go here. Okay, there we go. Yo. Yo, Rob. Hello. It's working now. This is how awesome. you doing, <laughs> Rob. I understand that joining us live is probably the most exciting time of your life. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Alhamdulillah. I have here The Critical Quran by Robert Spencer. Just beautiful. Yeah, that's a uh, that book. That's lovely and interesting, but we're uh we've got a topic here. So Yeah. All right. Uh, Robert Spencer is not here, so there's that. Yeah. Now, Rob, so uh, it was Sir Whitemead on Twitter who uh, pointed out Rosie's video and said that if you were to make a parody of Muslim responses to uh, the issue of Muhammad and Aisha, he, it, Rosie said exactly what he would have said as a parody. And mm -hmm. then when I said I was going live with this a uh, little before the show, Sir Whitemead messaged me and said, uh, Rob should join because he's been interacting with Rosie for a while. So I said, OK, Rob can jump in whenever he wants. And here you are. So, what uh, what thoughts did you have that you th that would be? I suppose I can. Yeah, I suppose I can clarify. Are you familiar with the background? Just very briefly. Or does, Rosie? Is anyone familiar with the background? Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. zero, zero. I and I, I saw that. I saw. I have seen two videos. The ones we're watching right now. I have zero, yeah, okay. zero knowledge beyond that. All right. So just Wait, are, you, are you from Are you from Australia? Are you from Australia? Yes. Are you? Yeah, we spoke, uh, a positive, we spoke briefly, uh, one of your past, like maybe six months oh, ago. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey. By the way, da David thinks that you're a criminal, by the way. <laughs> no. Well, yeah, because that, from, that's because, because you're from Australia. not that, not that he's a criminal, that he is completely descended from criminals. That's, that's the point. <laughs> yes. So yes. it's, his gen he has the genetics of a criminal. doesn't mean he's, he's actually, he could resist those criminal urges that are hardwired into him. Okay. So you are, you are inherently a criminal anyway. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, quick, quick question, uh, Rob. Public territory, guys. Hey, hey, do, do Australians actually say shrimp on the barbie, or is that like a Western thing that that's, someone made up? That's a non-Australian terminology. But okay, do you guys drink you fosters? Know, you know I, no. 
You, you know, know what I always fosters? think? Okay, interesting. Okay, lies. You know, you Everything we've heard think? about Australia is a lie. Okay, go ahead. I always think Australia looks like Mars. Like recently, I saw um, I saw photos from Mars, and it looks exactly like Australia. Same thing. West Australia does not East Australia. It's all the same. East anyway, Australia yeah. looks like the Amazon forest. Kid you not. Okay, question: Does the Western Desert live and breathe in forty-five degrees? Oh yes. In fact, okay. uh, there are you know, a lot of places in Australia that goes pretty hard. Do you know where I got that from, or are you too young? I'm trying to find out if you guys listen to Australian songs that we listen to. Let him talk, man. He's going to talk about the topic. Why are you distracting? I him? came to Australia at the age of nine and oh. ninety-seven, so I'm not. And you seem to have picked up the uh, accent pretty well. Yeah, there's a song called "Beds Are Burning." It's the Western oh, yeah, Desert yeah, 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 yeah. lives yeah, and yeah, yeah. breathes no, that, in forty-five degrees. <laughs> the time has come. Dun, 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 dun. That was a jam. Yeah, mid midnight oil, right? Yeah, and then of course yeah. there's the there's the best one of all time. Uh, I come from a land down under. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. That's classic. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, you know. They made that song, and it was number one, and it was a, uh, it made the millions of dollars. And they found out it was still copyrighted because that's like a, it's like a little song. It's a little ditty. It was still copyrighted, and then they had to give the money to yeah. someone else. That's funny. Anyway, have enough you, go, enough goofing up. All right, go ahead. What you so? Just quickly. Okay. Have you seen Men at Work live? No. They suck. Really? It's only the studio album album that actually works. When you hear them live, they they so they sound out of tune. It's it's crazy. That's good. It's, it's like hmm. AP. Anyway, but that, but He's that's good at making Aussie videos, style. but if you get them live, have, it's just he don't know any. Terrible. We have an Aussie where where we say, "Oh, she'll be all right." So it's it's that attitude. So. All right. So uh, they only yeah. said it in Australia. Yeah. We have acknowledged that we know nothing about Rosie except that she is a complete cultural relativist when it comes to defending Muhammad and Aisha. And in the other video, she thinks it's a beautiful relationship and she longs to be loved like uh, Muhammad loved Aisha. That's all that I've gathered from her. Although I have to say I did look at her thumbnails I, I don't know what's in a person's heart, but she definitely has leaned into the... Um, uh, I don't know. There's a, there's a grifter vibe, but I don't want to, I don't want to put that in. Anyway. She could just be doing what, what works on YouTube. Like Ali Dawa, you know, I, I'm sure he believes in Islam, but his thumbnails and stuff have that, uh, uh, clickbaity vibe that where everything is just trying to get people to, uh, like matter of fact, let me go over here. Um, so she's got she's got one and she looks like she's crying and yeah, it's, the one did I choose did I choose the wrong religion yeah, and it's yeah, probably yeah. no of course I didn't follow the wrong religion he 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 so I haven't watched that but that's what I would guess no not that's the one that went viral and yeah and yeah. then uh, I'm looking at the other ones lots of poses where she it looks like just modeling poses modeling poses <laughs> she um, got a lot of flack by Muslims. Literally having a go at us. Stop wearing oh, makeup. Stop. Oh, wearing and then she's she's got this one. I accepted Jesus. So there, it's going to look like. Oh no, she went and became a Christian. When I'm guessing she's going to say, since I became a Muslim, I accepted the real Jesus, the one who accomplished nothing and was a total failure because oh, really? because Allah completely sabotaged everything he did by tricking people into believing that he he died on the cross. So I'm I'm just I'm just guessing. But it is that that sort of that's what I mean by like this clickbaity vibe of like, oh no, did I choose the wrong religion? Click, 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 click. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All right. So what are your what are your what are your thoughts on this before we continue All right, this uh, so epic I video? I actually bumped into her on Dawa channels that are a few thousand subs in size. Nothing major, just you know, sort of like your typical Dawa streams that go on and and uh, I've been engaging with Muslims in that sense, just like in the weeds, so to speak. And she was a guest who I think she's been a Muslim now for about a year, maybe slightly less than a year, maybe nine months. Uh, basically, her, her young child, and I, my, my heart breaks for her, by the way, her young, uh, a child of hers at a very young age passed away. And that's a testimony that, you know, because the trial passed, uh, she found solace in a particular hadith that uh, spoke about how Allah will, uh, you know, give us some sort of peace. She comes from a Seventh Day Adventist background, and as far as I know, her parents are being generous with her conversion. Yes, there's obviously polemics at play, um, but in 
in discussing with those Muslim hosts as to why she converted, there was a and a se- section that pretty much opened it for the, for the public. Hey, anyone can come on and ask Rosie questions. And guess what? I joined. And she made these quite audacious statements that, for example, the, David, you've debated many Muslims saying that Muhammad's in the, pro- in the Bible and, and so on. Or even Muhammad's name is in the Bible. So, but I know the I know the arguments. I just wanted to see, would she herself say as an ex Seventh Day Adventist that Muhammad is in the Song of Songs? I kid you not. She didn't know where to find it. Live on air, I asked her, "Okay, where's Muhammad's name mentioned?" And she goes, "I know it's mentioned, but I don't know where. I have to go check." And then the whole discussion deviated, where a pack of wolves of Muslims just coming on and you know read. Uh, uh, a red herring sort of just navigation away from Rosie's spotlight. So, so she joined Islam completely oblivious to the teachings. Com- like she doesn't even, it seems no offense to her, but it seems she doesn't even know her own Bible. And then the videos that she's been producing since for the last say six months has been just a regurgitation of Muslim polemics that's already published. And nothing. So new you're saying, yeah. you're saying her conversion is basically motivated by, um, by, emotions emotional relief and she doesn't actually know much yeah yeah and, and that just quickly that so one of her early videos where she because i i listened carefully to her testimony apparently there was a female friend of hers that was a muslim approached her in a very nice way and again all kudos and power to her for for being there for her friend and all that obviously in the context of us being a muslim she shared this particular hadith it helped her in that time of distress. Again, as a Christian, uh, all power to that person. I think that's a, that's a very generous thing that was done. But then she latched onto that and then thought the whole thing to be universally true and therefore every Muslim argument to be true, but she hasn't herself critically mm-hmm. thought about the yeah. ramifications of these issues. Yeah, I just wanted to, so, so I wanted to point out like, uh... Those are that's pretty much exactly my impression. Not, not nothing with the with with her her child. I have no I, I had no idea about that. But um, the thing she's saying not so much in this video. This video she is taking. Lots of Muslims will go in the cultural relativism direction, but she just basically takes one point, cultural relativism, and then expands upon it for an entire video. In her other video, where she's talking about the history of Muhammad and Aisha, I'm like, where are you get it? Where are you getting this? Where are you getting that? Where are you getting this? Where are you getting that? And it's clear, but the entire time she's bragging about all this research. And so when I was researching this, when in all my research, I've she she's saying that as we're about to see. Um, and it's very clear she has never read anything remotely resembling a Muslim source and that she's just getting this from like Dawa articles and mm-hmm. believing everything they say, even if it's complete nonsense. So and guess what? That's pretty standard. That's pr- that's pretty much what you always see. Uh, from the converts, it's it's and that's 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 the target audience for Dawah. You're looking for people who don't know anything about Islam, and who don't know anything, and who aren't the t- kind of people who are going to question what you're saying. They're just going to they're just going to eat it up. Oh, that's great. Well, what a great point. They're just going to go with that. And so, yeah, that's uh, anyway. That that was my uh, reaction as well. All right. So why don't we go through some of this video, uh, Rob? And oh, I'll uh, I will add. Matter of fact, I will add your. Uh, there's something I wanted to something I wanted to toss in real quick. Um, so I will add your uh, a link to your channel in the description box later Thank on. You. Uh, you can also at some point tell everyone a little bit about yourself. I did want to share something here that my wife pointed out to me, but here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a give, send, go. Um, This is, I don't know what details are in there. I don't think it points out that this is for an ex-Muslim woman who became a Christian. Um, But uh, my wife knows this woman. I've I've talked to her, uh, but my wife uh, knows this woman. And basically she was a Muslim from, she comes from a Muslim family she converted to Christianity several years ago, and she married a Christian man who isn't a normal Christian man. We're talking uh, psychopath personality disorder level stuff that I'm all too familiar with. Um, but yeah, she married a Christian man with uh, who's in the psychopath realm. 
And in the course of their marriage, uh, she had a couple of kids and she, you know, tried uh, to deal with this through counseling and through going to the church. The church leaders sided with the guy because psychopaths are pretty good manipulators and he made it seem like he's the victim. Uh, We kind of know what's going on behind the scenes and... Let's just say uh, I don't want to share any details that aren't shared uh, in the. Oh, this is a give, send, go. I don't want to share any details that aren't here because I don't know what she wants shared. But let's just say the guy did pretty much everything that a Christian husband should not be doing. And if you have any ideas in your mind about what that is, you have no clue. You have no clue. Start thinking like what a psychopath would think of uh, as far as things that uh, that he should not be doing. Anyway, so. It eventually got to the point where she had to hide from the guy. So she had to go into hiding from from the guy uh, and she's just getting away from him. And anyway, uh, I didn't know this was this was set up a couple months ago, but someone put up a give, send, go to help her because there are legal costs. And then she's I mean, she's basically starting. She's going to be starting a new life, but it is a rough transitional period for her. Uh, it, it does kind of suck that, you know, she gets out of, she gets out of, uh, Islam and then gets a guy who is definitely not living as, uh, as a, uh, husband should according to the Bible. So anyway, I wanted to point that out. The link is in the description box. If you were going to, uh, give a super chat or something like that later in the show, uh, I'd be totally happy if you went and just chipped into her give, send, go to help her get back on her feet. And hopefully she finds a, it's, it's interesting too, because I mean, there, there's, there's a, a Christian ministry involved that like exposes messed up churches, <laughs> like messed up church leaderships that, that side with the guy automatically and so on. Um, and so there's a part of me that says, no, you need to expose all this. And there's another part of me that's like, this is, you know, you're, you're a convert to Christianity from Islam and you're struggling, you've got enough struggles to deal with right now than taking on a fight with a church or something. So yeah, just get the heck out of there. So yeah, I don't know what she's supposed to do, but yeah, everyone, if you can, please help this, uh, help this woman, help this woman out. And again, uh, I, I, I usually don't, I usually don't share any sort of go, go fund me or go, or give, send, go, unless I have verified the details or I know someone who's involved And yes, I can confirm uh, this is 100% legitimate. There is a woman there who is actually struggling. She's an ex-Muslim Christian trying to get her life back together after having a really, really bad relationship with uh, an abusive man. Uh, I'll leave it at that. But yeah, help her out if you can. All right. Now, we ready to jump back into this uh, video? Yes. All right. So back to Rosie's Corner. Powerful. On any science or any studies... 18 is also the age where you can marry yourself off. But there are places even here in the United States where your parents can marry you off even at the age of 15. People also used to get married by the age of 12. 18, again, was only recently decided as the best age for marriage. And I'm going to point something out. Just because you think this number is so proper or is so correct, it does not give you the right to go back 1,400 years to question a completely different era, a completely different society, culture, in a whole different okay. part. Okay. Got, it, got, it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, stop. It's um, pretty much the entire, this is pretty much this entire video. I think her other one is worse, but. Uh. Yeah, so um, the, the, the first mistake that she makes, and we already went into that in detail very much, is that she assumes, or she makes it look like the age of 18 is just some random number that was established, and we're just going with that for no reason. That's not the case. It is based on, um, it is based on scientific research and studies on experience and so on. Um, the fact that only uh, recently, in Europe and in other parts of the world, there were, um, you know, marriages at lower ages, which were, by the way, not that frequent. Um, doesn't mean that 18 is arbitrary. It means that humans made progress, right? Mm-hmm. We learned things and improved ourselves. Um, but when it comes to, and and that's how it's supposed to go. You can't say, well, only recently we were still making those mistakes, so why are we judging? Yeah, well, that's the whole point. We are making progress. We are learning and adjusting. That's how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to learn. Humanity is supposed to grow up just like a regular human. But um, 
when it comes to going back to the seventh century and judging Muhammad, um, we are not talking about some random person who lived in the seventh century and who married a little, little child, right? Uh, if it was some random figure mm-hmm. who just lived back then, a, a, a king, a ruler, or some you know uh, random caravan robber, then it would be meaningless for us to sit down and judge him for uh, doing a child marriage or for engaging in slavery or sex slavery. But if it's this specific caravan robber who is uh, supposed to be a, a moral example for all humankind for eternity and who is pointed at as a moral example for all humankind forever, timelessly in the Quran, that we are supposed to maybe sit down and analyze that person's morality, that person's actions, and then see, okay, does this look like uh, this guy is a perfect moral character that all of us should sit down here and, uh, and, and admire and adore and follow and copy? Does this look like someone that we in the 21st century, for example, should emulate if this guy acted... Um, you know, in that way, in the seventh century in Arabia, if he engaged in child marriage, lied to people, had people assassinated because he was offended, uh, took people's <laughs> wives away, uh, engaged in slavery, sex slavery, discouraged uh, the, the freeing of certain slaves, and so on. And um, no matter if he was better than his time and environment, or if he was exactly on par with his time and environment, If you give that person as a timeless moral example for everybody, then yes, we will sit here and we'll analyze it and we'll say, no, we can't accept that person. That's how it goes. Yeah. So, Rosie, we we want to make sure you understand that point and we want to make sure everyone's watching uh, understands the point. We're not talking about some random person here. Yes, there is this issue of what's called presentism, uh, judging the past by the standards of the present. So you say, ah, look at these dummies 300 years ago. They didn't know this. Ah, they're evil and so on. And, and you know, the, the problem with that is y- y- it's difficult to judge someone by a standard when that's the standard that you are applying may have been completely foreign to them. They, they, they have no idea. Right. So you but notice you can still say they were wrong. You'd you'd give them some leeway because maybe they're in a maybe they're in an area where they if you're if you're raised to think that is normal, then even even if we can say it's wrong and we can say why it's wrong, uh, you might say, OK, if you were if you were raised to think that's OK, uh, yeah, it was it was still wrong. But yeah, we understand. We understand. We, we can cut you some slack. Totally different story with someone that is set up by a religion, by a world religion as the pattern of conduct, as a pattern of conduct, as a timeless pattern of conduct. Right. Because now now you're saying now you're saying that that guy is the standard for not just that time, but for the future. Precisely. And so, Rosie, I no idea how you're how you're missing this. This who who are we to say that this culture is better than this? Co- Your God says this guy is the pattern superior to others. So it's it's your God and your religion and your your prophet are doing exactly what you're mocking and condemning and laughing at in in this video. And you don't get it. Why? Because you've already been programmed by a religion to not get it. You've been programmed already to be completely hypocritical and not to be able to understand. And I have no doubt that what I'm telling you right now. Notice if you were talking to someone else and you showed them some tremendous hypocrisy, you would hope the person would go, oh, yeah, I hadn't thought about that. Hmm. I mean, here we are trying to impose one culture on the entire world, and yet we're condemning we're condemning any culture who tells another culture they're wrong. What's going on here? You would think that. But I strongly suspect you're, you're still not going to get the point or see anything wrong with it. Just it's like, not- just like, just like when it's pointed out that the doctrine of the Trinity you responded to at the beginning of your video, it has not been the doctrine of the Trinity for anyone ever and is therefore a straw man. I already strongly suspect that will not bother you even slightly. You already don't care if you're completely misrepresenting Christian theology. You just you just don't care. And your fans won't care either. If I completely misrepresented Islamic theology, I mean, I'm allowed to joke and so on. But if I were serious and I were seriously just completely misrepresenting it, I would get called out by by my viewers. My viewers would call me out and say, David, that's not what Islam actually teaches. You need to get that right. You won't you won't get that because it's built into your ideology. It is completely acceptable. Why? Because your God and your prophet did the exact same thing. They completely straw manned the opposition. That's why they say this is why Muhammad this is why Muhammad and Allah say that that the Jews worship Ezra and call Ezra the son of God. No, they don't. No, 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 they don't. 
and no, you're, you're, you, Muslims just don't care. So that's why I can say your fans won't care if you completely misrepresent Christianity, and they won't care if you completely misrepresent Islam, quote fake hadiths, any of that stuff. They just won't care. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I just want you to know that maybe at some point you should ask yourself, why is all of this acceptable in your religion? Why does your religion turn, make people like this? That's an interesting okay. question for us. Beautiful. Powerful. And so here it's this issue, 18, 18 best age to marry yourself off. The world. Well, Based on uh, what? Your can, I, can I say something quickly? Sure, sure, sure. All right. If it's powerful. How curious that in the classical period, uh, I hope my mic is better. I try to change some settings. Hope what? What are you doing? Echoey. Is my mic good? You're fine. No. All right. Okay. Uh, in the classical period, uh, Mayan civilization, so 250 AD to about 900 AD, the average age was between 16 and 18 for, for women. Average. Average. Mm -hmm. And anthropologists across the board, uh, you, I mean, we are trying to go back 30, 40,000 years. If you're talking about, say, Aboriginal cultures in Australia, right? Aborigines coming to Australia about 60,000 years ago. There's a general understanding of the average age, especially for women, again, in that 15, 16 year old bracket. When we go into, let's just stick with, say, first century Christianity, uh, Roman culture, women in their early 20s are marrying. Not, I mean, it's not like a, it's not a common thing for young women to marry. And in fact, they're marrying well into like an adolescent, so, so called adolescent age. And then you have this Jewish notion that, say, men become complete men at the age of, say, 30. So this thing about uh, going back to the age of six and nine in, in the Quran and the Islamic context is just anthropologically, it's a question that I still can't answer. Like, why does it emerge as this total like outlier compared to every other civilization around the same time Muhammad's running around? that have normal ages, what you and yeah. I would consider normal. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's an issue. Uh, she mentions 12. She's, you know, uh, she mentions 12. She says, you know, a few hundred years ago, they were marrying at 12. That was actually very common. And so you can listen to her reasoning here. She's like, if just a few hundred years ago, it was 12, then I mean, if you go further back than that, then they're just going to be marrying kids all, all over the place. So you're pointing out in reality, average ages, and you end up with, uh, when you check the average ages and so on. And I'm saying this because this gets completely misrepresented by like the Hikikachu crowd. They yeah. seem to think that if you go back a few hundred years, everyone's marrying seven and eight and nine year olds and so on. Um, no. Uh, so what you have That's is in Christianity and Judaism, the tendency was, whether it's canon law or, uh, or the rabbis and so on, uh, 12 was set as kind of a minimum age and it would be it would be a combination of puberty and the age of 12 that were sort of the the baseline don't talk about it before that don't, don't you're, you're not dealing with it you're not dealing with it before then in other words if a girl got precocious puberty at let's say 7 you don't that doesn't mean you jump on it you still got to wait till she's till she's till she's at least 12 and if a girl hits 12 and she hasn't gone through puberty they would hey, wait till she's gone through puberty and so on um, so you had these kind of minimums, but that doesn't mean that everyone's just pouncing on them as soon as they turn 12 and they've gone through puberty. They're not just pouncing on them. There's still, there's, there's just people, people waited. It wasn't this, Hey, uh, old enough to bleed, old enough to breed mentality, jump on her and so on. Um, and you, so Islam, as you pointed, Islam is like this outlier. It's just, no, you're not waiting till 12. You're not waiting till 10. You're not waiting till anything. Uh, and you're not waiting for puberty. You're not waiting for any of that. You're basically waiting till the girl is you, you know she she's you're not going to crush her by having sex and you're not going to uh completely rip her body open when you have sex with her that's what they're waiting for and that's what rosie is defending here even though she probably doesn't realize what she's defending because she's just going with what she reads on pretty terrible about, websites about that age 12 i'm reminded of studies in greco roman medicine and science that uh very interesting the psychology of why women would cover their heads with a head covering. And this is, you see this at the forefront in the Corinthian letter, where Paul says nature itself teaches you that a woman's hair is for glory. And, and he goes through this very peculiar language in, in that chapter. 
when you do and so when scholars commentate on that they're like hey by the way when paul quotes the greek word for nature he's verbatim quoting from galen and aristotle let's speak about how at minimum when girls reach the age of 12 then they have to be they have to practice this head covering scenario which means prior to the age of 12 there are girls running around without any head covering so there's a at least a visual sign that they've reached the they reached the age of twelve, not that they've reached the age of say sexual reproduction or puberty. It's just this is the age for the girl from from twelve up. She does the head covering scenario. So mm-hmm. I'm just wanted to add on top of that, David, that notice the Greek culture is not thinking about oh she's got you know <laughs> there's a sign of mm-hmm. of fertilization as a possibility therefore now head covering is the issue no it's 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 like sequentially this is her her you know her progression as she grows right and then from 12 onwards this is now her new clothing style and then marriage later on around again 16 like xenophon's essays will speak about around 16 as the average age for girls to marry powerful powerful stuff who are you to judge yeah. who's who's galen to judge well, I'm... <laughs> Just because this is your new norm, again, new norm, just because this is your new norm, it does not mean you can question our prophet. I could question your prophet all day long. Yes, we can. Rosie. Yes, we can. Just to be clear, I can call your prophet a child molesting, murdering rapist all I want. Do not tell us what we can and cannot do. It was from a different time and place. Notice. We can't, we from a different culture cannot question her prophet, but her prophet, uh, she can question us based on her prophet and say everyone else is wrong. We cannot say he's wrong based on any standard, but they can just say, hey, here's what an illiterate seventh century Arabian caravan robber said. Therefore, it, it, all you have to adapt. Uh-huh. And now I know a lot it. of people are going to be like, oh my goodness, are you promoting child marriage? No. Yes, you're defending it. No. What I- yeah, and in your other video, you talk about how beautiful it is. So, yes, you are promoting it. You just don't realize it. What I am simply saying is, if within a given culture, if it is something that is acceptable, if you if, if you knew that there wasn't any issues, if, if it wasn't bad back then in the eyes of the era. Okay, so if, if female infanticide wasn't bad in the eyes of the Arabs, then you have no right to criticize it. Muhammad was evil for criticizing female infanticide. Yeah. Shame on Muhammad him. Muhammad literally condemned it, yeah. Yeah, if you show up and you find a culture of uh, cannibals and you say, hey, stop eating each other and uh, and shame on you, if it's fine with them, then it should be fine with you. I mean, guys, this is, one, this is this is a ridiculous moral position to begin with. It's it's insane for Muslims to be used to be appealing to this. I mean, absolutely insane. Like, Really think about it. People back then were looking for anything and everything to badmouth the prophet, peace be upon him. <laughs> Don't you think that if this was a real issue, the one ambitious I, I heard this that Muhammad fellow. I need to mm-hmm. badmouth him. Yeah, I, I I heard this so many times, and uh, they need to understand what a what a what a terrible uh, object yeah, this bad. actually is. Uh, if it if it was so bad, then why didn't the people uh, criticize him? Um, no, you could go into whether they did or did not criticize him, but it doesn't matter. It's completely irrelevant because yeah, the yeah. Point L- little, not- little, side, little side note: we, it's not like we have a record of all of their criticisms. Yeah, we, yeah, ha- yeah. we have Muslim records from centuries after the time of Muhammad. That's what we have. It's not like you have all. It's not like you have all these writings from the people of his time about this. But even with that said, even if we grant that no one at the time had any problem with this, what are your thoughts, AP? They were all wrong. That's it. They were all, if nobody said anything and they all thought it was good, then yeah, they were all wrong by uh, by today's standards. Maybe back then, nobody considered them wrong. Maybe nobody had the idea that they were wrong. But they were wrong yeah. by the very standard that what they were doing was actually harmful. And, and I, I don't judge them. I don't judge those people in that time for not understanding it, for not condemning it, for not get, standing up and, and and putting an end to it. You see, that's not what I'm doing, which is why this point is entirely invalid. I am judging Muhammad's behavior and the the behavior of child marriage as uh, wrong uh, if you want to present it as a timeless moral example to live by. That's the entire point of it. So it doesn't matter if people back then said something about it or not. Yeah, so again, Rosie, if everyone in 7th century Arabia were torturing 
four-year-olds for fun. They just torture them all day for fun. No other reason. They just torture them for fun. And you said, and no one objected to this. Do you conclude that therefore it's fine? Because yes. that's exactly what you just said to your viewers. That's exactly what you just said. If no one in a culture had a problem with it, then no one has a right to judge them or to yes. criticize them or to say that they were wrong. That's right. what you just said as a Muslim. Is that is that your moral position? Cultural relative, like uh, extreme cultural relatives. We're not talking about minor issues here. We're talking about major moral issues. Should you act in the best interest of the safety of a little girl? You're saying that is completely up to the culture. If a culture wants to uh, gangbang five-year-olds, and if, ev if everyone wants to think it's fine, you have to say it's totally fine. Are, are you serious? Is that your position? Because that's what you're saying in this video, and you're saying it in a completely arrogant and condescending fashion that you're acting like anyone's uh, anyone who could possibly disagree with you is like an idiot or a monster. It's and you're, like and you're, and you're, the, you're the one defending child marriage to prepubescent girls. Okay. It's moments like these when I remember uh, that David, uh, <laughs> that you don't have that filter that some people, uh, that some of us have, oh, which what? is why you will just say something as horrible as what you oh, just yeah. said. Oh, hey, I'll go ahead and say, AP, <laughs> what yeah. what actually what I actually say that's filtered. That is like massively filtered because the stuff that pops into my head is way, 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 way worse. We should do something. We should do something. We couldn't even do it here. We'd have to go to Rumble or something like that. We'd have to say yeah, yeah. like David Wood unfiltered. I will actually say what pops into my head. It would be pretty disturbing. It would be pretty disturbing. Yeah. Not as disturbing as things that Australians say because all, crim all criminals down there. But... What's up? We can't help it if Allah decides to go into a 7th century Arabian limbo and be stuck in that society, right? Yep. So, uh, no, we can't. He picked all cultures and he said, hey, the one where no one objects to marrying little little girls, that's the culture I want to impose on the entire world. Oh, wait a minute. Rosie says that that, that would be cultural imperialism. Ah, 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 I better fix this. Let's see. But no, the age of Aisha has only been something that has brought up within the last couple of years. Now I'm gonna give you a... I'm gonna give you... I'm gonna give you a little scenario for you. Hey, quick question. Suppose I say that my culture is to completely uh, insult and mock other cultures. And I, it's my, my, it, it's part of my culture to mercilessly judge all other cultures, especially seventh century Arabian culture. And that that's my culture. And that my culture is to brutally mock and insult your prophet. Would you say that that's okay since it's my culture, Rosie, and that I get to do that? Or would you say that my culture is wrong? I, I, I'm legitimately interested in, in, in how far you're willing to go with this. Think about, right? Just so uh, also for clarification, uh, when Muslims, do they recite Al-Fatiha as part of their prayer? Just yep. a trivia question, <laughs> right? Now, the yep. last ayah says, so show us a straight way, not the way of those whom your wrath is against the Jews and the Christians. Uh -oh. so there's a cult, there's Wait. like an ethnic group singled yeah. out. And then a non ethnic group that because anyone can be a Christian, any mm -hmm. ethnic group can be a Christian. So now you've, you've thrown all of humanity in that umbrella sort of statement. And going out of your way later in the Quran in Surah five, that because the Torah speaks about certain Jews picking up sticks on the Sabbath, and the Hebrew term that means you're monkeying around. Allah takes that literally, <laughs> that Allah transformed them into literal monkeys and pigs. Powerful. Now, notice that's in your whole, for all eternity, Allah has this depiction of humans anatomically going back to the form of a pig and a monkey, but specifically for Jews. It's proof of evolution. Now, that's one hell of a cultural uh, engagement, right? Yeah. 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 Uh yeah, cultural relativism. I mean, if you if you were if you were to actually study Islam, and say, will and make a prediction, will this be the religion that defends cultural relativism? You say, of course not. That's ridiculous. But if you actually factor in that it somehow programs people to use anything as a defense, you might say, okay, well, yeah, they would. They would if it was convenient, even if it was complete, complete nonsense. All right. Maybe she's maybe she's about to say something more powerful. Let's see. Living somewhere oh. in the woods. She there, says, imagine it, a tribe somewhere. Them. And in this tribe, in this there tribe, is no technology. Zero. There's no contact. No like, tic-tac. The outside world. No rosy. If somebody corner. wanted to come in, they could. But 
Like, there's no really, there's no contact. People don't really know that they're there or anything like that, right? It's just them. Okay. Okay. Now, the norm here in, in this in this tribe is yes. women. What they like, the extent of their of their knowledge, the extent of their skills is you need to learn how to pick berries you need to learn how to clean and cook the animals that are being hunted and brought and so what she, what she's telling get, us right now what she's telling us right now is that muhammad was an ignorant man from the seventh century he didn't he didn't know better no that's not the point she's making she's making the point that if you had a culture where all you needed to know in life was how to pick berries and how to clean and how to cook the animals that the men were bringing home then once you've learned that, even if you're a little girl, you've learned everything you need to know. And therefore, it's okay to bang you. That's her point. And so who would you be who would you be to come in and judge this culture when, hey, that's all girls need to know to be a good wife, picking berries, cleaning, cooking. And so once you if you learn that by the age of 10, what's the problem? What's the problem? That leads to the very same conclusion that Muhammad was an ignorant man in the seventh century. Wrong. That. that was his time. You're you're assuming that we're not cultural relativists. She's a cultural relativist. Let's go. Once you learn she, this, just quickly, she's also which is, she's also assuming that that hypothetical culture has already also concluded that picking berries and ergo that's the the lot in life, so to speak. That's that's the most complex you can be. That oh, by the way, at this age, it's allowed as well. It's there's just mm -hmm. so many conjectures and assumptions in this analogy. It's just ridiculous. Well, grant them all, and let's see where she's going. Only thing that you're supposed to learn in this tribe, once you learn this, don't you think that if you know this, you're ready to you know get married and build a family and all this because you already know what you're supposed to do. This is how you're going to survive. This is how the tribe has survived for years. And if you're a male. What do you do? You hunt, you go and, and you uh -huh. provide food for, for the so, uh, for your family. You learn how to so build means, a shelter. So that means Muhammad was just an ignorant man from the What's wrong century? with you? I said you're wrong. <laughs> Stop thinking like a cultural dictator. <laughs> your family, let's say, right? So think of these things. Let's say that by the age of 10, by the age of 10, a young girl knows how to pick berries. She knows how to um, cook and clean uh, the, the animals that are being hunted and brought. And there's a young boy by the age of, we'll go with 13 or could be 16. doesn't matter. 54. This young boy, he already <laughs> learned how to go and hunt, and he already learned how to build a little shelter out of wood and all this stuff, right? Yeah. Uh huh. So okay. what she's saying is that Muhammad Let's was an ignorant man in the seventh century of his environment. No, it's not what she's saying at all. What's wrong with you? She's saying, imagine you had a young boy who's fifty-four, and he sees this nine-year-old who's already learned how to pick berries. <laughs> Should he bang her? Yes. Because <laughs> he knows how to build a shelter and she knows how to pick berries. So you see, you've been refuted. All right, here we go. So, so in, that, in that case, Muhammad just suddenly uh, shrinks and uh, gets becomes younger and turns into a 16 year old. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you think, mind you, this is a tribe that has been on its own, has no technology, no contact to the, to the outside world. Uh-huh. What age do you think that they should wait to get married? It doesn't matter. <clears throat> yeah, see, you just said it doesn't matter. Ah. So they could be two. No, no. I'm That's so what you just said. AP it, head, headline. <laughs> AP agrees with Rosie's corner. No, the whole analogy doesn't matter. <laughs> the whole analogy doesn't matter because of the reasons we already described 50,000 times so far. Uh, and, and again, the comparison would be that... Uh, so the implication would be based on this analogy that we should just not judge Muhammad because he was just a, a product of his time and an environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and very and simple: a litmus test with other cultures. Just go to any anthropologist, ask them what was the minimum age. The average age was around sixteen to twenty. Um. Yeah, and so, uh, my goodness, here, 
I don't even know what to do. This is so, this is so, this is, let me let her finish before I say how bad this is. I'm looking because, for a partner. Because, I better because, walk around and find a girl that can pick berries. Because she's about to add some, uh, add some extra stuff here. That's going to, oh, I don't think she realizes how bad this is. Oh, they don't know about this whole, well, in the West, it's 18. Like, okay, let's say. Wait, no, she did. She did say what, how long should they wait? So I would say again, they should wait until they are both physically adults should wait until they're both physically adults racist um so if you were from another culture and if you came upon them and they they didn't know anything about this and you could give them you could give them some information guys it's it's, it's way safer for your wife if you wait if you wait until she's grown and according so to rosie it would be totally wrong to give them that information about something that could save lives and save their babies and things like that at she's 10 he's 54 we'll say 15 he's 15 right they're about to get married like she already learned everything that she needs to learn to Picking survive berries. and but know, hasn't but hasn't reached puberty survive with the tribe. If, you, if it's okay. a parallel for muhammad he and aisha she hasn't reached puberty. he needs to learn in order to survive with the tribe okay so they're getting married imagine now somebody from the west goes to their woods and is like, no, 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 this marriage cannot happen. Everybody's like, why? They're ready. Why? No, in America, this is not allowed. Is that the argument? Notice, uh, Rosie, we already explained to you what a straw man is. Our argument is not whatever is allowed in America, that's that has to be imposed in the rest of the world. And in America... Our argument is not, hey, this is what we teach in America. Things can be taught in America that are wrong, that are also really morally bad. wrong, that need to be corrected. According to you, they can't be corrected because it's a different culture, right? Um, the claim is not, hey, th what you're doing is bad because it's, it, it's not what America teaches. The claim is it's bad. You should not needlessly put prepubescent girls in danger of their safety. You shouldn't do it. And you shouldn't endanger their children by uh, by increasing the rates of premature birth and, and all these other things. You shouldn't do that. It's 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 bad. And so just just to be just clear, that's what you're actually criticizing. And I know it's popular. So oh, I'll just say everything is America. No, it's not. It's not about America. Yeah, it's not about America. It's not. Uh, the, the other thing is also, of course, in this scenario that she gives, which is a very interesting scenario, uh, if there was a culture that we know of where uh, this is actually happening, um, if somebody from America uh, went over there and said, no, no, you will not do this. Of course, yeah, that would be absurd because that person is not in charge there. It has no say there at all. Mm -hmm. But if we were <laughs> but if we were in talks with that group and began including that group into our society or uh, you know made international laws or anything like that we would probably mm -hmm. say you know what guys this needs to be fixed for very clear reasons which we have established and which we will happily explain to you and and by the way uh we've talked about this before because i mean uh we, we had uh mary uh from too many marys on the show and she was breaking down some things about uh what the muslim sources and the, the muslim schools of thought have said about this issue but i pointed out that uh years ago i was reading um i was reading about there, there, are, there are groups of doctors that actually go to places in the muslim world where guys have sex with young oh, girls yeah. and end up giving them fistulas so they they end up uh they end up severely damaging the girl because she's too she's too little to have sex and what do they do the doctors actually repair the girl so they they re they they repair the fistulas and so on uh and and of, of course and then they what do they do they try to educate them they try to educate them guys this is dangerous you need to wait a little longer so that you don't end up with this problem according to rosie shame on them shame on those doctors for, for coming and helping those girls shame on them they're evil those doctors are evil and the people Racist. are trying to educate these tribes to say guys you need to for the for the welfare of the girls you need to not not be banging them when they're so young um according to rosie these people are sick evil uh uh they're base they're basically cultural hitlers islamophobic racist hitlers. wow this is islamic dawah nowadays yeah. i am pretty sure that those people would be like start the fire we're gonna cook this guy up 
Wait, they're cannibals too? And that would be okay, of course. That would be okay if they're cannibals. As as long as everyone in the (laughs) tribe, as long as everyone in the tribe agrees that it's okay to eat a human being, Rosie would not be able to object. No one, no one, according to Rosie, has the right to criticize a tribe of cannibals. Yeah, perfectly fine. Yeah. Cannibalism, yay. No, guys, don't cook me. At least I agree with the young age marriage, but don't yeah. cook You're me. You're racist. Yeah. Racist. We will cook you. This is normal by our standards. And who's going to be cooking you? The 10-year-old, because she's grown. <laughs> and she knows how to cook. She's going to make cook you and oh. pour some delicious berry sauce over you with the berries she picked. Like, you can't try to force your... <sighs> You can't try to force your morality on other people," S- said no Muslim ever. <laughs> it's it's oh it's 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 in every situation, right? It's, it's we can be intolerant, but you need to be tolerant towards us. We can impose morality, but you can't impose morality against us. It's there's no there's yeah, no Rosie, no concept of consistency. Rosie, according to Islam, um, uh, clearly. Um, you know, all, clear in Islamic history, in, in Muhammad's behavior, in his example, in the caliphates, and so on, you are supposed to impose your morals on other civilizations, no matter if you think what they're doing is, uh, you know, according to them, okay or not, because you have the truth and you are supposed to go and impose your own values. So if you are saying nobody should be doing that, because that's ridiculous, then yeah, then Muslims shouldn't have been doing that either. Then Muhammad shouldn't have done that. That means Muhammad was wrong. Congratulations. In, in other words, Rosie, I'm looking at the camera directly. You ready? Picking berries, child marriage, and cannibalism. Get it together. Totally fine. <laughs> totally fine. Just because things are one way now does not mean that that's how they have always been. Just because something is one way where you are at does not mean that they're the same way somewhere else. Yeah, I agree. And that does not give you the right to say, well, this is wrong just because that's your norm. Uh, mm. Well, if it's my norm, then who are you to judge my norm in my culture? Yeah. If I say it's my norm to judge all other cultures and to condemn all other cultures and uh, say uh, America is superior to everyone else and that's my culture, who are you to judge? Stop telling me. Stop telling me what to do. Leave the cannibals alone. And I get it. Okay. I get it. Leave the cannibals alone. In our here in in America, um, or here in the West, well, I'll say in the West. If you're ten or twelve, yeah, you're still in school. You're still playing with dolls. You're so, but if you're what'd she say? <laughs> she say you're still playing with dolls. <laughs> Wait a minute. Ten or twelve. Is she? Did she just take? Did she just take as a sign of being too immature for marriage? Because she's saying, hey, in America, yeah, it makes sense to not be married to a young Wait, girl because she's she still in school. Implied. Yeah, she okay. said, you're still in school. You're playing with dolls. That's what she just said. Oh. Hang on. Wait, of it, course, wait, if wait. you play with dolls, that means you're not ready for marriage because you're still a little child, right? Yeah, that's what she sounds like uh-huh. she's saying. Uh, uh-huh. see? And Rosie, this is the problem with uh, going to mm-hmm. dumb Dawa sites to learn about Muhammad and Aisha and not going to the sources because, oopsie, you just, you, just, uh, you just destroyed your entire case right there by acknowledging that, hey, if you're still a little girl, you know, the kind that's still in school or playing with dolls, you're not ready for marriage. But, you know, Aisha, she's something else. Yeah, let's find out. But let's go and let her finish. In the West. I- well, I'll say in the West. If you're 10 or 12, yeah, you're still in school. You're still playing with dolls. You're so- but if you're in that tribe... That's not what you're doing. At the age of 10, you're learning how to pick berries. You're learning how to cook and clean that Ah. animal that's being. So you have. So in this imaginary tribe, then you already know everything by the time you're 10 or 12. And therefore, it's okay to get married there. But if you were in a different culture where you're still clearly a little kid playing with dolls, then it would be wrong. (laughs) Okay. So so Aisha never, Aisha didn't play with dolls, obviously. By then, by that standard, right? No, 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 of course not, of course not. Yeah, it's 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 crazy that the real life tribe, like the Mayans, right, and later on the Aztecs, who did do human sacrifice, still had the common sense to marry at sixteen at the youngest. Yep, isn't that interesting? Um, (laughs) All right, let's see if she adds anything, and then maybe we'll do something that Rosie forgot to do in all of her careful research. Which in her other video, she brags about how 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 thoroughly she's researched this issue. I'm 
I'm so glad Aisha wasn't playing with dolls, man. This is good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely not. We are definitely not going to find anything about uh, Aisha playing with dolls. Right. Brought and hunted. Just because something is one way where you are at does not mean that it's the same way somewhere else. Now, oh, thank you. I've thank also heard people say, well, no, it's not. It's not that. It's the age gap. It's the age gap that bothers me. Okay. Would you have a problem with an 100-year-old man marrying a 60-year-old woman? Nope, no. because they are both equally they're both equally adults. Yeah. <laughs> if the answer is no, then you don't have a problem uh, with the age gap. Yes, I can I can I can I can have an I can have an issue with an age gap while granting that a 100-year-old can marry a 60-year-old we can still have a problem with the age gap, but go ahead and I'll, I'll explain. You, you know what the are. you know what the funny thing is. Um, I would normally like after hearing this, I would think, "Wow, that is just so stupid! What a stupid example!" But then the thing is, I remember Dan Hikikichu giving that very same example as an objection to 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 inspiring philosophy. Uh, so suddenly, it doesn't seem that extremely stupid. It just seems Islamically appropriate and stupid to everyone else, right? Because that's what oh. that's what Daniel Kikichu also said. He was like, "So if you have a problem with marrying a child, then why don't you have a problem with marrying a hundred year old woman?" Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> because see, a sixty year old and a hundred year old are kind of in the same category, right? They're kind of in the same category. They have they they have crossed a threshold into not just adulthood, but now they're now they're getting on the old side of things. They've they've lived many decades. They are capable of deciding these things. If you're okay with that, does that mean you can have no objection to the age gap between a 54-year-old and a nine-year-old that he's having sex with because he could order one of his followers to hand over his daughter? And keep in mind, because we're, we're talking about a specific scenario here, uh, Rosie, Muhammad not only, not only had sex with Aisha when she was nine and then died when she was 18. He also made it a rule in the Quran that no one can marry his wives after him. So the so what we're actually talking about here is a 54-year-old man who's going to be dead in nine years. He's only going to be alive nine years, nine more years, marrying a nine-year-old girl who's got her entire life ahead of her. He's going to have sex with her from the age of nine until the age of uh, until the, from the age of nine to the age of 18. Then he's going to die. He never has any children with her. And so she has to spend the rest of her life as a childless widow. Uh, can we actually have an objection to an old man marrying a girl who's old enough to be his great granddaughter? And then leaving her as a childless widow for the rest of her life when she wasn't even in the position to make that decision. And, can and we granted, can we can we object to that? that? The Muslim sources are true yeah. that she remained a, a, a widow from there on out. If it's mm -hmm. not true, then uh, it's not surprising. It wouldn't surprise went, me if she actually remarried. She mm -hmm. probably went clubbing every night. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right. There's about a minute left of this video. Let's see. Okay, so now I want you to think. How do you determine the age of marriage? Is it biology? Because if you think yes, about biology, well. yes. after a female has her first menstrual cycle, she's technically ready to give birth. Like, no, she's not. Wrong! She's no, she is. Oh. Liar! 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 Oh, she's not. Stupid! Uh -huh, so after a, after a baby is born, it is technically ready to become president because it has a brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. R Rose, Rosie, notice she just I, I actually make fun when, when I'm when I'm criticizing the Islamic position because they, they a bunch of the Dawa guys all say this. Uh, is, Yo, as soon as if my daughter got her first period at the age of nine, I would tell her you were ready to be married. Right. It's I make fun of them by saying that their mentality is old enough to bleed, old enough to breed. Mm -hmm. Rosie, not sure you know this. Puberty is a process. Yes. Puberty is a process, a process that takes years. Just because a girl gets gets her period does not mean the process of puberty has been completed and that she is a grown woman. It's what you're talking. And 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 by the way, wh why is she talking about puberty in this? <laughs> why is she talking about puberty when we're talking about Muhammad and Aisha? 
When we're talking about Muhammad and Aisha, we're talking about Muhammad having sex with a girl before puberty. And we're talking about the Quran, Surah 65, verse 4, allowing men to marry, have sex with, divorce, and pass on to the next guy, girls, all before they've reached the age of puberty. So why is she even why is she even talking about this? Why is she even talking about this as if this is about uh hey, is Islam is saying it's okay once you've reached puberty. Let me back, let me back up. Is that what she actually said? Yeah, something like that. The age of marriage. Is it biology? Because if you think about biology, after a female has her first menstrual cycle, she's technically ready to give birth. What did she just say? She said if you go with biology. A girl is ready to give birth after she has her first period. Now, she's able to get pregnant. This does not mean she's able to give birth. If your hips haven't widened, if your birth canal hasn't widened, you could you could die. You can die from getting pregnant. Um, but notice, she just said, according to biology, you're able to, you're, you're, you're basically a woman after you've reached puberty. So Muhammad AP, can we say that according to Rosie... According yep. to biology, Islam is wrong and Muhammad was wrong. According to biology, because biology says wait until a girl has reached, gotten her first period, and Muhammad did not wait until Aisha got her first period. Most most likely, yes. Bingo. All right, let's go ahead and finish. And this. Dan Hikachu, when he debated IP, what I wanted to tell Hikachu is that when he proposed the age of five, if you remember that debate, which just ap was just absolutely shocking. Ironically, He's he's going beyond Muhammad. I mean, yeah. the Quran doesn't give an age limit in sixty five four, right? But mm -hmm. at least with Muhammad, it was six, and then consummation at nine. He could choose saying five. I mean, mm -hmm. bloody hell! Yeah, because I mean, keep I mean, keep in mind, you can have Muhammad as a pattern, and he has sex with her at nine. He doesn't say, hey, everyone has to wait until she's nine. The Quran, the Quran doesn't say that. You could just say, okay, that's when Muhammad. But notice, that's not that's not, that's not not an aspect where you say, oh, this is what we all have to wait for. You don't have that. Um, so, yeah. So, we're, we're about to, we're about to uh, do a little crash course in the sources. Hold, hold up, hold up, Rosie. hold up. I also, I, I read something quite recently by, uh, who was that? Um, I think it was uh, Ibn Qudama. I think I read in his in his uh, in his writings on child marriage. He says he he says in what is uh, what what is reported about the about the age of marriage. Um, wait a minute, just let me get this right. Okay, yeah, I think it is him. Yeah, he said us. he said that um, so that there is no minimum age at which a man can marry a woman or can, can marry a little girl so th th there is no limit um and he can request that the parents give the girl over to him but once she reaches the age of nine according to his understanding since that is when muhammad uh united with aisha once she reaches reaches the age of nine the parents have to give her over to him they can no longer object in any way. So he can take her and have sex with her earlier than that, you know, at, at, at any time. For example, when she's five or four or something, can say, okay, you know, okay, she's ready. She's ready. Come on, parents. Come on, you agree she's ready. Look, she looks ready. And they're like, yeah, okay, I think you're right. Yeah, here, here, have her have sex with her at the age of four or five. But uh, they can also at that stage still say, you know what, as parents, we don't agree that she's ready. So let's wait. But if she reaches the age of nine, then they have to give her over. So that, that, that's the understanding, according to one of the most respected scholars in Islamic history on morality. Yeah. And uh, uh, AP, Allison uh, here, uh, Allison here, um, probably uh, code name for probably one of the Dawa guys uh, saying this. But uh, yeah, she was uh, trolling your stuff yesterday. And she's trolling here now. I, I just glanced over because I was like, watch, someone's probably saying, oh, Rebecca was three. Uh, Allison here. Uh, Rebecca was three and Isaac was 37. All right, Allison, we're going to give you a little test right here. We're going to give you time to answer. Um, I'm going to give you five minutes. You can do your you can do your research. And, and obviously, you know what your sources, you know what the sources say. You know what you you, uh, you 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 know the Bible that you found this. Uh, so give us chapter and verse, chapter and verse from the Bible, chapter and verse. That, so that would be Genesis chapter such and such, verse such and such, to show that Rebecca was three. You got five minutes. You got five minutes. I'm going to start my watch, starting my timer. You got five minutes to come up, chapter and verse, 
or I'm blocking you for being a compulsive liar, just like your prophet. Alhamdulillah. All right. Yes. So everyone tells me. Uh, guys, tell me when, uh, tell me when, uh, Rebecca, I mean, tell me when Allison has responded, uh, giving us chapter and verse. And the answer is she will never give chapter and verse because it's not what the Bible says. It's a dawah lie. It's a lie that was made up to defend against criticisms of Muhammad for banging a nine-year-old girl. And so the Dawah guys lied, and then they just keep passing it on. Go ahead. I'll go ahead and wait. And you can you can thoroughly search. <laughs> see, <laughs> see, you know what Allison's doing right now? She's like, oh, but that's what I heard from Sheikh Uthman, so it must be in there. Let me search the Bible. Let me Google search this. Yeah, good luck. Hopefully, hopefully you learn that your Dawah guys are compulsive liars, like mm -hmm. your fake prophet. Like she's ready to get pregnant and give birth. Now, is it mentality? Because with mentality, mentality depends on your surroundings. It depends on your culture. Because like I said, if you're in the tribe and you're learning how to survive at the age of 10, and you, or you're in the West and you're learning just to play with dolls and go. Oh, Elle just responded and said she can't respond because uh, because the next Zucker Knight timed her out. And so what's the what's the time limit? So once that. OK, uh, Allison, you have until I'm going to be generous. I'm going to until I don't know what sort of time limit uh, he put on there for lying. You can <laughs> um, probably reverse it. Yeah. Once your time limit is up, everyone tell me when the time limit is up. And then, Allison, you give us chapter and verse showing us. Where Rebecca was three. And uh, and if you can't, then I'm going to block you for being a liar unless you admit that you that you were spreading lies and that it's not based in fact. And that'll let you stay. But we know you're not going to do that because that would that would expose all your Dawah, all the Dawah clowns you worship uh, as liars as well. That's what you're saying. But guys, you guys, guys by the way, I, I, I can never get past this. Notice if you point out something about our prophet, this is the this is the, the Dawah thinking. Dawah is, if you say something true about our prophet based on our sources, then we will lie about people we claim to believe in as prophets. Isn't that, isn't that weird? The lie about Mary, the lie about Jesus, the lie about Abraham, the lie about Moses, the lie about Isaac, the lie about all of them, and claim that they respect them all. It's a very, very weird system. Seems demonic. Allison will humiliate you. Yes, Allison will humiliate me. All right, guys, tell me when Allison is back to, uh, to uh, give us chapter and verse. School at the age of 10. Those are two very different mentalities. So how do you determine the correct age for marriage? Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it was in some way informative. <laughs> it, and it, was quite infor it was quite informative about how Dawa works and what it does to people. Make sure to Best like this ever. video. Make sure to comment what oh, type of content you guys want to see. And also, if you guys have any questions, please do write them in the comments. Make sure to like subscribe. Make sure to hit that join button down below to join Rosie's Corners Insiders. And may Allah always be in your corner. I will see you guys in our next video. Allah be in the corner. Bye. That's, I wouldn't say that if I was a Muslim. All right, <laughs> I'm. Uh, I'm gonna put up a. I'm gonna put up a couple sources on the screen. So um, I'm. I'm glad that we clarified one thing, which is that. So she pointed out that uh, Aisha was, of course, uh, not like the kids in our time, uh, because in our time, the you know people her age play with dolls and things like that. So this this makes me feel much much better about this whole issue. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, yeah. Let's go through a couple of quick. Uh, let's go through a crash course on these sources. Um, this is Sahih al Bukhari. Notice the chapter heading. Giving one's. Oops. Let me get Allison off there. No, I can. I'll leave it up. I'll leave it up until she gets back. Uh, giving one's. Notice the chapter heading. Giving one's young children in marriage is permissible. Interesting. Why? By virtue of the statement of Allah, and for those who have no monthly courses, i.e. they are still immature, that's Quran verse, 65.4. So for anyone who doesn't know, Surah 65 verse 4 says you can marry, have sex with, and divorce a girl all before she's reached the age of puberty. And the idda for the girl before puberty, uh-oh, what, uh, what, uh, what did Rosie say? Biology said? According to biology? As long as you get your first period, then you're ready to have babies. That's false. That's false. Any uh, medical professional will tell you how dangerous that is. And, and guys, just why is it perfectly acceptable in the world of Dawah 
to spread information that actually endangers people's lives. It endangers girls' lives. They spread this in their community, and then girls say, oh, okay, well, uh, I'm nine years old, so I can I can marry this this old guy. And it's spread, it's spread by people like Rosie. Uh, but notice, the idda for the girl before puberty is three months in the above verse. And then as an example of someone marrying a prepubescent girl, we have narrated Aisha that the prophet wrote the marriage contract with her when she was six years old and he, and he consummated his marriage when she was nine years old and then she remained with him for nine years, i.e. till his death. Uh, I won't add much commentary. If you guys want to jump in with anything, I just want to put some sources on the screen because there are we, we do tend to have uh, tend to have new people coming along. Uh, so sometimes people don't know what the source is saying. So it's good to uh, go through them a little bit. Uh, L says that um, Allison is back. So we can all wait now. Allison is back. She is timed back in. And so she can give us chapter and verse, chapter and verse. Everyone waiting, everyone waiting for chapter and verse for her to give us. Otherwise, she's lying about a prophet and his wife. And we know Muslims wouldn't lie about prophets and their wives, would they? Of course never. not. That would never happen. Never. Guess who's um, back. So we'll go through, we'll just go through some of these rapid fire. The marrying of a daughter by her father, 5134, narrated Aisha that the prophet wrote the marriage contract with her when she was six years old and he consummated his marriage when she was nine years old. We got that. Uh, 5158, the prophet wrote the marriage contract with Aisha while she was six years old and consummated his marriage with her while she was nine years old and she remained with him for nine years, i.e. till his death. So she was with him until she was 18, and then she was a childless widow for the rest of her life because Muhammad didn't want anyone comparing him with other men later on. 6130, uh-oh, narrated Aisha. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a second. What did Rosie say about dolls? Anyone remember? Yeah, Aisha, and I, um, well, uh, people in the West, when they are like nine, ten, or something, they still play with dolls. But of course, in other cultures, uh, they are grown up and do grown up things, so it's no problem for them to get married. Yeah. Um, narrated Aisha. Narrated Aisha. This is Bukhari sixty one thirty. I used to play with dolls in the presence of the Prophet, and my girlfriends also used to play with me. So a bunch of little girls playing with dolls. When Allah's messenger used to enter my dwelling place, they used to hide themselves. The little girls would run. Oh, get us away from Muhammad. <laughs> smart, smart girls, because he would try to bang you. They used to hide themselves. But the prophet would call them to join and play with me. Hey, bring those little girls back here. I want the little girls. I want Where to watch. Friends? I want to watch you play with the dolls. Show me. Show me how you play with the dolls. But the prophet would call them to join and play with me. Notice, notice the commentary from Ibn Hajar al Asqalani. The playing with dolls and similar images is forbidden. In other words, any Muslim uh, reading about Aisha playing with dolls is going to think, wait a minute, we're not allowed to play with dolls. That's, those are images. Those are forbidden. We have the commentary. The playing with dolls and similar images is forbidden, but it was allowed for Aisha at that time as she was a little girl, not yet reached the age of puberty. <gasps> what did Allison say? Oh, as long as you've reached puberty and you're not some little girl playing with dolls, then it's okay to have sex with you. See? You mean, you mean, Ro you mean Rosie? Rosie. Oh, Rosie. what did I say? You said Allison. Oh, did I say that? Oh, I was looking at the, yeah. still looking at the chat for waiting for. It looks like she's trying to uh, trying to share a, a video or something. Rosie, go to the video. Look at what they say. Chapter and verse. Chapter and verse. Hang on, guys. Uh, I haven't I haven't seen everything. Has she posted chapter and verse? Because I mean, we, we gave her. Who am I talking about? Are you just, you just making said, stuff up? No, no. You just said Rosie. When okay, you were but there's too many Allison. names at once. You just said uh, Allison when you were talking about Rosie, and then you said Rosie when you were talking about Allison. You're confusing me. Allison. <laughs> Allison. Did she post chapter and verse? Did she post? Did Allison post chapter and verse? If she's not, she's getting blocked. Oh, they're saying she's trying to change the topic. Wait. Okay. L said, she just said, can you give me Tawheed in the Bible? What? What are you talking about? You, you got one last chance, Allison. I'm looking right now. I'm looking in case you post it. Chapter and verse. Chapter and verse. And she's saying, she's saying, oh, but there's a video of a rabbi confirming it. If, if go to your video from the rabbi, 
chapter and verse from the Bible giving us the age of Rebecca. I'm waiting. I'm not seeing anything. I just want to clarify that the book of Jubilees, which is well before the rabbinic period, which, by the way, there are rabbinic texts that say Rebecca was 14, not mm -hmm. three. Yep. But Jubilee says the age of 20. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... How you... curious. The second temple text says 20. Hmm. Uh, so uh, L says, first she said sources don't matter. Then she said about some video. Then she started talking about video. So she's saying sources don't matter. <laughs> she's saying sources don't matter. They're irrelevant. Okay, so there's no sources. The only sources we actually have that Christians would take seriously, um, do not say how old Rebecca was. They just show that she was significantly older than three because the stuff she's doing is not something a three-year-old could do unless you want to say she had superpowers, right? Oh, so Allison is lying. I said she could apologize. She refuses to apologize. So L or um, Wyatt, someone go ahead and, and block her. Uh, I don't know how I can be more, more reasonable than that. If you're just going to make things up and then not fix it, not defend it, not give the evidence, but not apologize when you're exposed for lying. We, we, I have no idea. Why is this just, why is this standard in Dawah? Like what, what, does a, what does Islam do to your mind that it makes you think this is completely acceptable? Claim to believe in prophets and lie about them the entire time. Wow. Um, all right. So Aisha was playing with dolls. We have that right here. Uh, now we're in Sahih Muslim. Prophet married me when I was six years old and consummated the marriage with me when I was nine years old. Uh, you also, let's see, it was narrated from Aisha that the prophet married her when she was seven years old. You do have some variations in the sources as to when the marriage contract was written. Aisha was so young, she can't even, she's eh, it's kind of when I was really, really young, six or seven. And she was taken to his home, uh, taken to him as a bride when she was nine years old. And what's this? She took her dolls with her. But according to according to Rosie from Rosie's Corner, the two things, the two things that signify you're you're a little girl not yet ready for marriage are you're playing with dolls or you haven't reached puberty yet. And that's exactly huh. what we find for Aisha. 3482. Well, I, kind of, I kind of felt better because it looked like Rosie was telling us that Aisha did not play with dolls, which showed that she was mature. Now yeah. we're finding out that she did play with dolls, mm -hmm. but... Um, Anyway, I'm still just going to say Allah knows best. Yeah, that's uh, that's the approach. Uh, the messenger of Allah married me, married her when she was six years old, consummated the marriage with her when she was nine years old, and he died when she was 18 years old. We have the full timeline. Sunan Abu Dawud, the messenger of Allah married me when I was a girl of seven years. Suleiman, one of the narrators said, or six, and he consummated the marriage when I was a girl of nine. I'm noticing a pattern here. Lots of stuff about her being nine. Uh, the Messenger of Allah married me when I was six and consummated the marriage with me when I was nine. And I used to play with dolls. Uh, history about Tabari Prophet. Uh, married Aisha, the 10th year, blah, 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 blah. Three years before the emigration, consummated the marriage in Shawal. Eight months after the emigration, on the day he consummated the marriage with her, she was nine years old. And of course, everything comes down to Surah 65, verse 4, which was cited um, cited in, uh, in, in the, uh, after the chapter uh, heading in Sahih Abu Qari 5133. Here's the verse. And those of your women as have passed the age of monthly courses, so if she's too old to have a monthly menstrual cycle, for them the idda, prescribed period, so the idda is if you are going to divorce someone, how long is it before she can marry another guy? Because there would be, you know, anyway, there, there's there's this waiting period called the idda between when you divorce her and when she can marry some other guy. For them, the idda prescribed period, if you have doubt about their periods, is three months. And for those who have no courses, i.e. they are still immature, these are two girls who are too young to have a monthly menstrual cycle. And Rosie, if you think we're making this up, we know you're not hearing this from the Dawah guys you follow. But uh, if you think we're making this up, look up the look up the commentary of Ibn Kathir. Look up the commentary of Ibn Abbas. Look up the commentary of Tafsir Jalalain. Uh, they all agree this is talking about marrying, having sex with, and divorcing, and passing on girls all before they have ever had their first monthly period. So that's what that's what this is about. And so if you have married a girl, had sex with her, 
and you decide to divorce her so you can pass her on to the next guy, you ha the, the next guy has to wait three months before having sex with this uh, prepubescent girl. So notice a girl, according to according to Islam, Rosie, which you're defending and defending as beautiful and wonderful and great, a 54-year-old man can have sex with a six-year-old. He can have sex with a six-year-old, get bored with her, pass her on. She'll have to wait three months, but then the next guy can come along and he can have sex with that six-year-old, get bored with her, pass her on. A girl could have five different husbands before she's all before she's even reached puberty. And it's you're so defending it, Rosary. It's so romantic. It's so romantic. It's so beautiful. It's so oh, oh, it just sends chills up my spine. Thinking about I how beautiful this is. Keep in mind, we're, uh, uh, we're not. <laughs> AP's, AP's joking. That's exactly what she sounds like in the next video. I don't think, well, it, we, it took us a while to get through the first video. I don't know how, I don't know if we'll get through the second video, but we'll, we'll at least watch a little bit of it just to give everyone a gist of the state of Muslim women, converts, people convert to Islam, and suddenly, instantly get the idea that it's a really good idea to start defending uh, having sex with uh, prepubescent girls. Where are they getting that idea? Because that's what Allah says, and that's what Muhammad did. Well, Allah and his message everyone? know best. Yeah. They do know best. They do know best. All right, should we take a couple super chats? Take a couple super chats. Of course, because it's so romantic. Let's take some super chats. Yeah. Uh, did want to remind everyone there is a link to a give, send, go. A give, send, go. I have some anyone? berries in the backyard. I'll pick on them while you answer. Yeah, them. well, as, I mean, as long as I mean, as long as uh, uh, some girl in the neighborhood, even if she's uh, six or whatever, if she knows how to pick berries. <laughs> Hey, Especially hey, six. Hey, what, wait a minute. What? I remember picking berries when I was like five. That would, gosh, that would have mean I was ready for marriage. <laughs> oh, and she, she said, she said, well, you know, if a boy, if he knows how to build a little shelter, I can build a little shelter. We used to build forts all the time. So we're all good. Everyone's good. It's five wow. and six year olds should be getting married all the time, according to uh, awesome, uh, the perfectly functioning moral compass of <laughs> Rosie's corner. <laughs> um Pretty good. All right. So, okay, let's let's go through a super couple super chats and then we'll start this next video. Not sure how how far we'll get through the uh the next video. Uh oh, yeah. So anyway, I did want to remind people there is a link to a give send go that is for a uh a woman who several years ago left Islam, became a Christian, got married to someone with a personality disorder and unlike my wife, who married a guy with a personality disorder, and things turned out perfectly. This did not turn out perfectly. Anyway, she's trying to get back on her feet after actually uh, fleeing from an abusive relationship. And uh, I, my wife knows my wife knows her. I know her, so it's one hundred percent legitimate. And we know that she is in some difficult times right now. So uh, cool if everyone can chip in. And one more, one, I'll say once again: if you're if you want to give a if you, if if you're planning on giving a super chat to somebody, a bunch of you are already given super chats. But if you were going to give a super chat and you wanted to go, give it to her instead. Totally, totally cool with me. I am a positive prophet and I approve this message. Absolutely. Um, so trying to find the beginning. Um, trying to figure out where I stopped. Okay, let's just go through here. Oh, no. We already read this one, right? Debate between AP and Pikachu. Daniel's career will be mm -hmm. oval. He will be gotcha Whoever wins must hand over their ghost. Yeah, yeah, I saw that already. What's wrong with you? <coughs> I'm, okay, yeah, I remember some of these earlier ones. Uh, that's vocab. Oh, I think I stopped on the one about vocab. All right, here we go. Uh, why did Muhammad marry Aisha? Because when she was six, seven, eight, nine, and Muhammad thought this was the timer for his pedophilia and he, and he speed run. Do you get that? Oh, it's oh, a nerd a joke. Timer. Six, seven. Oh, it's a nerd joke. Because when she was six, no. seven, eight, nine. Thought that was a timer. All right. Any percent uh, speed run is a is a joke used by speed runners in games. Okay. So. so that sounds like some nerd stuff. You wouldn't get it, David. Yeah, I wouldn't understand all your nerd stuff, guys. Uh, <laughs> my name is Sean. He changed his picture. Uh, Ridvan said he doesn't like my picture profile, so Ooh. I changed it. That was the guy with the guys <laughs> kissing, and he changed it to Muhammad Hijab and Ali Gawa. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. 
You like it better now, AP? Is it more acceptable now? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> so much better now. Thank you. Yeah, AP's, homo so AP's homophobic with pictures, except if it's uh, Ali Dell and Mahdi. <laughs> but we just have to say, following Rosie, hey, if these guys did want to kiss, then who are we to judge a different culture? Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, Pakistani, I can't see that little flag. I guess that's Pakistan. Pakistani PM committed shirk on live TV saying they were... Uh, saying they hold Muhammad over Allah with no consequences. I sent the video to AP on Twitter. You should check that out. So they're saying uh, the Pakistani prime minister said on live TV that Muhammad is over Allah. Oh, that's cool. And that's, uh, we've, we've talked about that as a saying before that there's a saying in certain parts with say it about, say it about Allah, but don't you dare say it about Muhammad. <laughs> but, 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 but it's all about pure monotheism, right? Rosie. This very beast. Uh, I think Dwight uh, Joachim, Joachim said uh, did the best job portraying Muhammad in Sling Blade. Uh, I've never I never saw a sing, Sling Blade. I know it was uh, uh, um, I'm not sure which character that was. I've seen a couple. I've seen a couple of clips. That was uh, with Billy Bob Thornton. Uh, AP have probably already answered this, but. What is the main reason you started to corrupt the land? <laughs> I.e. main reason for leaving Islam. What's the main oh, reason uh, you corrupted the land by leaving Islam? It's hard to, to think back, but I think uh, it, it, there, there wasn't one reason. There were too many reasons. It just went on forever of uh, doubting and questioning and suppressing. But I would say um, the ones that left big impressions that I remember the most are um one are about how um i was never supposed to question but the quran says uh you know do you not think do you not uh do this and that so i thought hey if, if allah give me that gives me this brain why am i not supposed to question why am, I not, why am i not supposed to ask all of these difficult questions it doesn't really make sense uh and to kind of i kind of went down that whole rabbit hole terrible reference and um but I think most importantly, it was the whole scientific aspect of the Quran describing this very primitive world with the sun going into a muddy spring and the sky being the solid thing that, could, that can fall down and all, the, all of that, which is why I um, spent so much time making videos about science, which is mm -hmm. why I made that one hour scientific mistakes video. And I have to, I have to say, you know, it takes it can take years because you, you see, you can see this with Rosie, right? You can see this with Rosie and you'll definitely see it uh, when we, when we watch a little bit of the second video, but once you just make something up and I'm saying this because she's, she's citing sources that are completely fabricated. Once you say something, it, it spreads so fast among the Dawa fans that it could take years to actually correct this, this lie. Uh, but notice, I mean, you go back 10, 15 years, Scientific miracles, most popular argument, uh, side neck and neck with the uh, the perfect preservation of the Quran, and even Muslims now abandon those and acknowledge that it was absolute deception. What's crazy is that Muslims will still keep going to the same Dawah guys who were lying to them all that time. I mean, it's it's absolutely you get programmed to love lies, you get programmed to spread lies and to have no problem with the lies. It's very very interesting stuff. But don't blame me for lying. Just I'll just do a better job next time. She's I don't know if it was coincidence. I don't know if it was coincidence. It was. AP, but uh, as you were sharing your testimony, Jibril was farting through my window and everything just blew over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he couldn't hear it. Couldn't hear anything. <laughs> I deliberately had it muted. But yeah. it was a whirlwind here to drown out your beautiful testimony, right? Wow. That's Guys, that's, uh, <clears throat> that, that comes from the Muslim sources. Uh, look it up. Uh, yeah, that's an inside uh, joke. Here we have, uh, cheese do lot. This Muslim is righteous. Talking about uh, Rosie. Yes, she would be um, She would be quite a catch for uh, someone who wants, someone who's completely gullible and believes anything she hears that's positive about Islam. And Why speaks in a really condescending fashion and, and completely misrepresents Christianity and lies about it. What? Why are you insulting her? Joshua says, uh, no more goofy Sufi. Now it is Islami Salami. And all of you have great voices. But rank of laughs goes one AP. What? Oh, no. One Anthony Rogers. OK, yeah. yeah. I was going to say AP's not first. Uh, yeah. yeah. Anthony Rogers. 
No, Mufti Abulaith would be top. Uh, but uh, uh, this person, no. uh, Anthony Rogers. Two, your brother in Christ, goat scream. That's the goat here. <laughs> And AP, and then D Wood. Thank you. I will. I will See? agree to that. Uh, third Rome, no comment there. But thank you. Sid Dave says Muhammad married women of all ages, from milfs like Khadija to underage girls. Mo destroyed Aisha's uterus, and that's why she never got pregnant. It is interesting that he supposedly Muhammad supposedly got uh, got Khadija pregnant. He married her when she's 40 and somehow had like six kids with her. Married her when she was 40, supposedly, and had like six kids with her and then could never get any of his other wives pregnant except his slave girl, Mary the Copt. That is weird. Like, I mean, he's turbocharged. He's turbocharged when he's with Khadija. He's got the super sperm. And then his other wives, he just can't do anything with them, even though they're way younger. Weird stuff. Just quickly though, didn't Mary, uh, sorry, not Mary, um, uh, Aisha, didn't she suffer with hair loss? With what? Yeah, yeah. H hair loss? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's before he consummated the marriage with her. And so she got okay. sick somehow. Yeah. Uh, Jesse says, me reading the critical Quran, finished with the cow part. I may not be the smartest new Islamic scholar, but you guys are right. Islam does what Islam does. Stay away from Islam and snakes. I think the snakes is a reference to uh, AP, I mean, uh, Anthony, breaking down uh, snakes yesterday. Oh, yeah. yeah. I heard Muslims have consistently dumb takes because they spend all their money on makeup and there's nothing left for books. <laughs> is that true? No, it is. Uh, it is pretty. It is pretty common to uh, be wrapped up appropriately, but still be decked out and doing doing modeling poses the entire time. Uh, David, I heard Father Zechariah Butros' channel was closed. Didn't know that. Can you do a live stream with him? I can uh, set it up. By the way, I've known you known you since two thousand eleven. That was a feat of Allah. That's a long time. The only thing I agree with in the Quran is Imran 18. Surat Imran verse 18. AP, you want to look that up real quick? Yes. Surat al-Imran. I'll continue going and you can quote the verse. It says, Allah himself is a witness that there is no God worthy of worship except him. And so are the angels and people of knowledge. He is the maintainer of justice. There is no God worthy of worship except him, the almighty all wise. Is this it? Huh. Yep. That's what uh, our friend agrees with. Sarah from Al-Aqsa TV. Haven't seen her in a while, says, uh, oh, my goodness, you guys, why are you such ethnocentric Islamophobes? Stop persecuting Muhammad, peace be upon him, just because he was a minor attracted person. It's his culture. Yeah, that is. Rosie, if you take nothing else away, just, I mean, get your mind around this. You are defending child marriage by appealing to cultural moral relativism as your moral theory. And no culture can judge another culture according to your moral theory. And so you can't say That's anyone else is wrong. Uh, by the standards of the culture and era, it was cool for Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin and Bill Wyman of the Rolling Stones to live with 14 year old girls. Yeah, why not? And why not? And why couldn't you why couldn't you slowly uh, change the culture to make that uh, completely acceptable? Why? Modes. You know? Yeah. You can't change culture. What a clown. There's nothing more ethnocentric than the very Islam itself. Yeah, that's what we've been pointing out. Uh, <laughs> Look at the channel. <laughs> <laughs> Muhammad Hijab Zabubas. Uh, glad we don't have a picture there. Uh, Rosie is proof that having a high IQ is an impediment to receiving the truth. Praise Allah. Um, Sid Dave says, whereas Islam has replaced other religions like Christianity and Egypt, uh, the Middle East, Buddhism and Hinduism and Pakistan, Zoroastrians and Iran, the collective IQ of society decreased and they all became losers. That is uh, everyone. YouTube censors. Listen, I'm just reading the comment. I am not affirming the comment. That's some bigot who doesn't understand cultural relativism. Solitary Emmy oh, says, oh. hold on, hold on, David. Um, 
Would you agree that um, so Rosie isn't uh, does doesn't seem particularly dumb, right? I mean, she no, she doesn't. Yeah, she's she seems. Yeah, you know. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, seems intelligent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, seems intelligent. Yeah, yeah. Yep. she should know better. That's the yeah. point, and that's the point. It's uh, when we, yeah, when we say you're smart, that isn't necessarily a compliment. We're saying yeah. you're smart enough to be able to see through this, and you're not. Yeah. So you have some other problem. Uh, let's see. Just wanted to quickly tell you about Wikipedia. Colorly people, the older men make the pregnant of the boys buttock to rite of passage evil cultures. I don't know exactly what you're saying, there, but it does not. It does not sound good. It does sound like an evil culture. Uh, Luke Skywalker was Palestinian. He was poor and lived what? in a des- on a desert planet with Tuscan sand people. You see the proof. That is correct. It's a home. Dune reference. That's where George Lucas is taking it from. Mm, huh. No, it's not. Dune had a co- time machine and copied him in reverse. All right. Okay. Joshua said, reconcile this. Reconcile this, Islamophobes. How did Muhammad ask Allah for forgiveness 70 times a day? And he is the perfect moral pattern of conduct. Hmm? That is an issue. According to the Hadith, Muhammad asked forgiveness 70 times a day. So what the heck was that guy doing? That's why he was perfect. Inshallah. No, smash Allah. Uh, Epstein's lawyers, if he made it to court, your honor, my client's island simply had a different culture. Perfect, perfect, perfect response. Perfect response. According to Rosie, hey, that island had its own culture. You are in no position to judge all these uh, super rich guys going there to bang. How dare you judge my client's culture? And keep in mind, as far as I know, they're not having sex with like little five-year-olds and stuff like that. They're, yeah. you know, it's, it's teenage, it's teenage girls. The youngest documented victim was, uh, was only, was 14 years old. Of course, there are allegations of like, uh, of 11 or something, but that's not entirely established. So, um, th- that's the funny thing. Like I see sometimes Muslims, uh, talk about Jeffrey Epstein and then I'm thinking, why exactly are you talking about Jeffrey Epstein? What is your problem with him? Oh, we had a boom, boom room with uh, where Muhammad met Jeffrey Epstein and uh, Jeffrey Epstein said, yeah, uh, yeah, and started talking about what he's did. And Muhammad goes, oh, so you're into older women. <laughs> I found out he likes a teenager. Um, does predestination uh, imply Allah yeah. knew Muhammad would go on to have sex with Aisha and still chose to make him a prophet anyway? Yes, so yes. Allah knew yeah. that was Allah's. Uh, Allah gave Why? him the stamp of approval. To a guy who was having sex with a girl too young for a bra. That was his master plan. She just hates Puerto Rico. Rosie just hates Puerto Rico because child marriage is illegal there. True. That's why she was condemning Puerto, Puerto Rico. That makes sense. Uh, I responded to Rosie's video. What channel is this? Oh, that's Chaos. Yeah, Chaos. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, Wyatt's friend, a.k.a. Sir Whitebeat, a.k.a. the next Zucker Nike. Uh, that's his buddy, Chaos. Uh, but yeah, so the channel is chaos in order. And he says, I responded to Rosie's video on my own channel, beat you to the punch, but good content, bro. I'm sure that you chaos friend of Wyatt must do a better job than us. Although I have to say, I'm sure it's probably way shorter than this live stream. So you might have a, uh, you might have a point. Uh, five silver pesos said, and the prophet said, may Allah curse the Packers for they cut the aorta of the beloved Cowboys who were massive, who were massively favored in that game. And uh, the unbelievers cost us the parlay. Good. Can't stand the Cowboys. Uh, Marissa said, if everyone is a cannibal, then it's okay to eat people. Yes, that is entirely yes. correct. I think, Just- I think, uh, I think Marissa said that before we said it. She has the manner, there you go. She has the mannerisms, talking about Rosie. She has the mannerisms of Cardi B, AP's favorite singer besides Taylor Swift. Uh, yeah, I was, that might be what she was reminding me of with that. And so, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it, it, that's, that's actually when, 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 uh, when Cardi B will be going at it with someone and be posting these little, uh, this was back in the day, but she'd be posting all these little Twitter clips, um, correcting everyone. That is. Cardi B always makes me think of uh, Yasser Cardi. Uh, oh, hi, doggy. <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, what would you say? I said Cardi B makes me think of Yasser Cardi. <laughs> Yasser Cardi. Cardi B. Hey, we should make Yasser Cardi B. <laughs> Yasser, Yasser Cardi B. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Uh, 
he could be singing a, rap, a dope rap song. Uh, yeah. Oh, hi, doggy. Why you email me, AP? I'm at work now. I will. I forgot to get back. I will do that. Pretty rude. Joshua says, uh, uh, animals not in law, four states in... Not law in four states in America, Hawaii, New Mexico, Wyoming, West Virginia, but the depravity of Islam is why 14 centuries, uh, 1400 years of suffering for the world. Yeah. When you lay down a prophet as the pattern of conduct for everyone, then unless you challenge that, then anything that is a problem is going to be a problem for a lot of people. So you got to correct it. But uh, Rosie says, no, you can't correct anything. Different culture. I don't eat pork and I don't judge those who do. That's good. Yo, David, when is the best time to escape prison? Recreation time? Um, it's going to depend on the prison. I knew some guys who tried to escape prison and they did not make it. I eat bacon and I promise not to unalive you if you don't. This is good. We're getting some good feedback on the uh, pork. That's uh, nice. After Rosie was talking about. Uh, in the near future, all AP only fans will move to... That's what, that's what your fans should be called, AP OnlyFans. <laughs> AP OnlyFans will move to Hawaii, New Mexico, Wyoming, and West Virginia. <laughs> Sorry, David, for, for mentioning your state of origin, which is, uh, yeah, West Virginia. <laughs> the fact we even need to argue this is wild. Yeah, that's that's kind of the issue. And matter of fact, uh, I think it was, uh, I think it was, uh, I think it was Matt Dillahunty, I think, was it Inspiring Philosophy who said this, that it was about to have, we were about to have the debates? And James from Modern Day Debate, he said he's setting up the debate. He wasn't even thinking of like arranging them like this, but it was, IP had his debate with Daniel Hakikachu on child marriage. And right after that, I was having a debate with Kenny Bomer on Muhammad and Aisha. And James said he wasn't even thinking of putting them together. But uh, I think it was IP who said Matt Dillahunty um, walked up to him right before his debate. So the first of the two debates on child marriage and, and, uh, he walked up to him and said, uh, hey, uh, so am I to understand this correctly, that the rest of the debates are going to be about whether it's OK to bang a child? Uh, <laughs> but he used uh, he used more colorful, colorful language that I cannot repeat yeah. here. But yes. It, yeah. So it, notice that's really the really issue. It's like this is this, this this is this big discussion that we keep having to have on whether it's OK to have sex with a prepubescent girl, four year old, five year old, six year old. This is, the, this is the discussion of our time that we need to be having right now. Why? Because Muhammad. Thanks, you know, I, I I love it because uh, can I? So often when we talk about Islam, we're, we're talking about these horrible, these disgusting things. Isn't it kind of? Isn't it very telling that when we talk about Islam, these are the things that we talk about? This comes up all the time. Pretty this creepy. Is good. Yeah. Yeah. You can, want to say uh, something, now, David, Robin? The elephant yeah, in the room here is is child marriage. No, go ahead. No, it's <laughs> what Cardi about B. what about the fact that? Uh, the arguments that Daniel made in that debate with IP, I mean, surely, surely there's some sort of investigation. There has to be. There I mean, I'm be. not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying in a legal sense, I'm not saying he is, but it's just, hello. You're like, saying like if, if you were, if you were, if, if you were authorities, yeah, if you, you're saying if you were like uh, the FBI or something like that. Um, or some, you know, child protective services or something like that. You're saying after hearing Daniel Hakikachu, you're saying that he and his mosque should be monitored because we also know that there are uh, Muslims in the West who believe in polygamy. I mean, Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dawa had an entire show on this that they that 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 Muslims are, are yeah, allowed to have girls. are allowed to have a second, third, fourth wives and stuff, and they can they they can even hide this from their wives. But how this works is you can still be polygamous in the West. You just have your weddings in the mosque, in the mosque instead of uh, through the government. So you 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 might marry you might marry one wife and have this recognized by the government, but you have your second, third, fourth wife. Uh, they're just marriages in the mosque. And so as far as the law is concerned, as far as the government's concerned, these are single mothers. These are single mothers. And so they get government support. And so it's understood, hey, the government will pay for your second, third, fourth wife. And so yeah. might as well do it. But yeah, so anyway, so anyway, if you've got guys who are saying- when it comes to, When it comes to clear pedophilia. No, yeah, so I'm-, I'm, I'm yeah. 
Yeah, I'm combining. I'm combining it. If you say, if you say, yes, we believe that we can uh, have second, third, fourth wives and just hide it from the government, and you also believe that you can have sex with little girls, four, five, six years old, you're saying government might need to start uh, monitoring these situations to find out if these guys are actually banging little girls. I mean, the grooming gang situation in the UK in itself should be a should be a big big flag. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's very Islamophobic. Yep. Uh, let's care. see. <laughs> D Wood was born normal. I guess non sociopaths are abnormal. I wasn't born normal. I was born dope. I was born this way. What would Rosie say about Sahih Muslim five ten a? That's a little tricky because I'm not, there are different numbering systems for every edition of Sahih Muslim that I have. You want to try and look that up for a second, AP? Yes. See what comes up on uh, Cinder.com, and then I'll, we'll know if he's talking about a different one. When uh, any one of you stands for prayer, there is a thing before him equal to the back of the saddle that covers him. As in case there is not before him a thing equal to the back of the saddle, his prayer would be cut off by uh, the passing of an ass, woman, and woman black or, dog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and that's the one where that's uh, that's Aisha eventually heard about that. What you're making us equal to donkeys? And it says black dog is a devil. Yeah. Fosters, Australian for Budweiser. Is that was that a general assessment? Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. I recommend Han Han beer and Kilkenny and Guinness. Oh, Carlton Draft as well. Yeah, I'm only familiar with the uh, Guinness, but I'll check out those other ones. Are exorcism videos real? Um, yes. AP would say no. Yes. Um, I would be of the position that some of them are real and some of them are not. What's interesting is I, I took a psychology class and so the professor was an atheist and he was talking about exorcisms and stuff like that. And he was saying, uh, he goes, from a psychological perspective, what's interesting to us is the, the, the degree of effectiveness of exorcisms. And he goes, can anyone, can anyone have an idea of why exorcisms might actually be effective. And the, the thought, the, the thinking was, if you believe, if, if you, if you, if you, so notice atheist, he doesn't actually believe in demons and so on. But if you believe you're demon possessed and you believe that you've had that demon kicked out of you, could that actually have a positive psychological uh, impact on you? And yes. he concluded, yes, he concluded they're actually effective, even even though he doesn't he doesn't believe in this stuff. So uh, so anyway, the point, the point is, psychologists, psychologists would grant hey, there's something there's something to that. Go ahead, AP. There is some research on that. Um, I don't know. You might have encountered that, that uh, that it is a, that it isn't a naturally explicable thing. Uh, because of because of that very aspect of it, hmm. that you can be um, deeply convinced by something spiritual, and then uh, almost like a placebo, um, be convinced again that whatever uh, is being done is actually working, and that you have been relieved. So you, you you could totally believe that you actually are being relieved, but it's just your brain fooling you. So mm -hmm. that is a perspective. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. All right, we'll take a couple more of these, then we'll watch a little bit of that video. Again, probably not get through, uh, not get through it all, but uh, still have a bunch of super chats here. Uh, Joshua here, call IP to send this poor woman some books and studies of how bad this is, but she will not read anything. Like she probably never read the Quran or any book. Yeah, as far as I can tell, in her other video, it's just she just went to some bad websites. I, I see zero evidence. I haven't watched any of her other videos, but I've seen zero evidence that she has any clue what's in any Muslim sources beyond what she's seen on some websites. Uh, what is this? Three and one? Yeah, three of us on here uh, on one show. What is this? Three and one and not possible. Not shampoo. You've got three and one shampoo. That's uh, shampoo, conditioner, and body wash. How's that possible? Uh, it's impossible, according to probably towards, uh, uh, towards Rosie. Uh, from Ian there. Does pedophilia continue in Islam's heaven? Yeah, they are. Uh, they are. Quran, right? Yeah, they are young pretty young. Or something. There, there are actually different theories in Islamic um, 
thinking of how old everyone will be in the afterlife. There, there is this theory that everyone will be, um, that all women will be at a certain fixed age and all men will be at a certain fixed age where the men are slightly older than the women. Yeah, there's a, there's, there's a verse of the Quran, which is, which is translated in different ways, but uh, one of them says swelling breasts. And Mary Harp said she actually looked it up and I think she said it, it actually means budding breasts. So right at the age when, when a girl starts to develop breasts. That's the age that you're locked into. And then so you have sex with the girl who just starts developing breasts. And uh, of course, she's no longer a virgin anymore. But then Allah miraculously restores her virginity overnight. And then so she's a virgin again the next day. And you can keep you get to spend eternity deflowering virgins. You can deflower. A, you can deflower 100 virgins a day. Yay. Is is the solar system in, in operation when that happens? Like how how do we? clock this is a 24 hour cycle is it a martian it's, cycle it's, it's it a, a metaphysical cycle? matter it's actually inside <laughs> the sun <laughs> how tall are we are we yeah. 60 cubits yeah. Janna is actually Jannah. inside the sun uh though that's the big secret i just let it out here okay. it's actually inside the sun that's what Janna is powerful powerful i would like rosie to find her hamas prince um i mean in, in this next video we're gonna see she seems to find it really great the idea of a. Uh, 54 year old guy and a and a little girl i mean she thinks that's really really beautiful wonderful relationship to have it's so romantic wow. um so many of those who defend islam need to uh retake how to think ra uh, uh ration and logic 101 yeah um matter of fact we need to we need to do we need to do some live stream we need to do some live streams about like basic critical thinking stuff and spotting fallacies and not using them and so on what, what'd you say uh what'd you say rob do they pick berries in jenna well, if, that, well, that's how you can determine if she's old enough. <laughs> nice. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Whitey, don't say slavery in America was a different time. What about Muhammad and Aisha? Oh, it was a different time. Can't judge them. Yeah, that, that's a problem. Uh, and anytime you're saying anything needs to be changed, you're not applying cultural relativism. Uh, suddenly we get to having sex with prepubescent little girls and then we all need to be cultural relativists that that's the funny thing when you ask me like if you ask me for example i, I said that before in a video uh when, when there's when there was this whole discussion about slavery in america and there was this uh this this of course this very popular idea or movement of condemning uh those people who did have slaves my thinking is I'm I'm sorry. I don't I don't condemn those people for having slaves. I don't condemn the average person in that uh, society, even just a few hundred years ago, for having slaves. Because uh, it, most for, for most of them, in their environment and time, it was it was a very random. It was a very regular thing. Do I condemn yeah. that as a as a as a principle as a concept now? Of course I do. It, it caused a lot of suffering. It was terrible. But so, do I condemn the average individual there? No, I yeah, don't. You heard it here, AP defending defending slave owners and Hitler. <laughs> you haven't you haven't been around, Rob. But AP, if you get him started on Hitler, like, oh, I'm such a great speaker. I've memorized all of his speeches and stuff. It's pretty uh, pretty sick stuff. Uh, well, because <laughs> when Hitler spits as well, lands on the audience, they just laugh at them. <laughs> uh, according to historical sources by the way where the heck do you guys get the patience to endure listening to and responding to such ignorant individuals islam attracts scandalous uh people she was nine years old yeah it does take a i mean i mean think do you do you seriously want to sit around listening to videos defending child marriage do you seriously want to listen to uh daniel hakikachu promoting no but we have to and the main reason is for you guys who are watching, because we want everyone to be aware of this stuff and to know how to respond to it. Because keep in mind, you know, we can we can make a video and stuff. But at the end of the day, it's people. We need an informed population. That is the response. You need an informed population of free people. That's how you respond. So we're doing our part of that to help build an informed population of people who can go out and respond to this and who can uh, bring up these issues with their friends and so on. Uh, wasn't Aisha David, in David, a German no, term in summarization that's super chat. The German term is why are we dealing with chaos comp? Ah, I, is, I knew earlier. I remembered that, that, that I talked about that with you when you is chaos in. is chaos yeah, yeah, is yeah, chaos yeah. comp a thing is chaos comp a thing. 
It, it is. It you is. said Chaos Conf, right? Yeah, Chaos Conf, yeah. Obviously, in the, in the more general, generous, philosophical nuance of suffering in this world. Like, it's a, it's a genuine academic term, but it's a tongue-in-cheek sort of summarization of the super chat. Oh, hey, 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 here, here we go, here we go. <laughs> Loza Bread said, wasn't Aisha inept at keeping house? No, because her job wasn't uh, picking berries. Her job, <laughs> we know, you want to know what her job was? Hey, let's go ahead and take a look at Sahil Bukhari. And she was great at this job. Let's go ahead and look. So Sahil Bukhari, uh, number 231. Narrated Amr bin Maimun. I heard Suleiman bin Yasser talking about the clothes soiled with semen. He said, Aisha said, I used to wash it off the clothes of Allah's messenger and he would go for the Salat prayers while water spots were still visible on them. What is so romantic? Wow. So romantic. Go, go, go to the one where it says she used her nails to pick, not bury. Oh, yeah, yeah. Seal. No, we're not going to go through. We're not going to go through a bunch of these. Yeah, you have the ones All where right. she says she would scratch it off. Uh, you have the ones where she would scrape it off. Here in 232, it says, I used to wash the semen off the clothes of the prophet. And even then, I used to notice uh, more spots on them. So she's just scrubbing off the semen, scratching it off, scraping it off. Muhammad's about to head to the mosque. And she's like, ah, I still see some more spots all over you. Still see some more wow. semen all over you. Isn't That's this so uh, romantic? It's wow. so romantic. I mean, I just sit. Uh, it just gives me. It just gives me chill. We're about to. We're about to see this. Matter of fact, this would be a good time to go, to, to cut over to, to uh, Rosie and uh, talking about how wonderful this relationship was. But uh, so beautiful, wow. guys. So so on the one hand, you've got your child bride, and her main job, as far as taking uh, keeping house, as Loza Bread points out, uh, her main job is scraping, scratching, or washing the semen, the endless supply of semen that's covering Muhammad's garments before he heads to the mosque. But notice, he would, he's wearing the same cloth. She's like, let me scrape this, let me scrape all this semen off. Uh, on here. Uh, let me try and get it off here. Let me uh, try and scrape it off. Uh, scrape it off. Uh, maybe you need some tools here. Let me pull this off. Uh, scratch it off, scratch it off. She's scraping it off. She's washing it off. And what happens? Then Muhammad goes to the mosque in his semen-covered clothes. I mean, she tried scratching it off and there's some water spots on there. And she, she's always saying, oh, I missed a spot, I missed a spot, I missed a spot. And then he goes, no, I gotta get to the prayer, I gotta get to the mosque. And he heads over and prays. And then he's hugging it out with all his with all his buddies. <laughs> Talk about jizia. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this dude's covered in jizia stains and hugging it out with all his buddies. I mean, seriously, guys. Of all the guys in history, you got a semen, the, the, the one you choose, to be the the standard for all cultures is the guy covered in semen who's uh banging a, a nine year old. Like like, like how how are we having this Richard conversation? Carrier, a reincarnation of Muhammad. Uh, is he? Because he's polyamorous. I don't he know has, what else he's done. Hmm? Apparently, he has a semen fetish. Oops. That's a different topic. Carrier. Yeah. Doesn't surprise me because that dude's creepy. But Wh who are you talking about? AP. Humst. Humst. You don't know Richard Carrier? He was the popular atheist before you came along. Oh, that, the crazy you know, you know, guy? The foot, I do. The atheist dude? Uh, I've seen Thunderfoot the name. Whole, yeah, like that scientist atheist, kind of like a Richard Dawkins sort of camp. He mm -hmm. made this whole expose on Carrier. Oh, yeah? Yeah, AP. Yeah, Carrier was this guy. Uh, yeah, I, I made like a hundred page response to him back in the day because he, he, he came out with this book, Sense and Goodness Without God. And then I posted my response, Good and Senseless Without God. And he had like the dumbest arguments I've ever seen. Uh, it was things like, uh, uh, if God existed, there wouldn't be women with large breasts because this can be give them back problems. <laughs> and I was like, what? But my wife heard that. I said, here, look what Richard Carrier said. And she, my wife goes, wouldn't most guys look at the exact same evidence and come to the exact opposite conclusion? <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's what I'm saying, right? Uh, so he had that. He had his argument from butt monkeys, and he's like, uh, he's like, the fact that we don't see God is proof that God doesn't exist. Just as the fact that there aren't monkeys, uh, that there aren't, uh, what did he say? That there aren't pink monkeys flying out of my butt proves that there are no such creatures. I'm like, no, something not flying out of your butt is not proof that something doesn't exist. So anyway, that that's a level of argumentation. Wait, but, that sounds like a parody of a, of, a, of an argument for God. Uh, spaghetti mm. monster or something like that. That yeah. was his actual argument. And this is keep in mind, this is before the uh, pop this is before the popularity of the new atheists. You're talking like this is that sounds like an, that sounds like a parody of the ontological argument or something. AP like that. AP, I kid you not, 
I kid you not, in his one and only so-called academic book on Jesus mythicism that was published in 2014, in that book he says that God has a cosmic sperm bank where he takes one of the sperms and impregnates Mary with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, powerful stuff. Oh, hey, I'm I quoting verbatim. <laughs> hey, I also forgot it was on a. Uh... It was on, what was that website? What was the popular atheist website back in the day? Oh, it was infidels.org. It was infidels.org. Yeah, infidels, yeah. and, they, and they kicked him out. Oh, good. It, on infidels.org, he posted an article, and he's talking about how great he is, right? And he says uh, that he's uh, he says that he's as great as Aristotle and Plato because he matches them in every way, right? And so <laughs> I, I did a side-by-side -side comparison of him and Aristotle, right? <laughs> and I was like, okay, Aristotle comes up with the field of biology. Richard Carrier was in the Coast Guard. Aristotle uh, comes up with the field of logic. Richard Carrier, uh, you know, goes to, you know, I, I did this comparison and stuff. And, uh, oh, no, at first, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, anyway, then he actually, he went back and changed his article and said that, that he's comparable to them and all these things. It's like, are, are you a joke? He reminds me of Socrates, but not for the best reasons. No. Yeah. What, what's funny is, uh, is like that that uh, that degree of narcissism and the people who don't have it. I have a I have a friend who was um, my my friend Paul was Michael Ruse, a Michael Ruse uh, uh, atheist, but he said uh, so. He was uh, Michael Ruse's last graduate student. Um, but he said Michael Ruse starts off his starts off his classes, and he's he's just he just tells all these young people, "You guys think you're smart, and you're you think you're smarter than the people of the past." He goes, "I want you all to understand that all of you combined do not have the brain power of a Thomas Aquinas or an Augustine. You just don't. You're nothing. You're nothing compared to their brain. So get that through your head uh, going yes. through it. But it was, it's, it's cool." Uh, so much more, much more realistic. All right, let's go ahead and look. Gosh, it's already eleven. We'll watch it. We'll watch yeah. a couple minutes of this video to get her. Really? Because it's basically the same thing. We're gonna do that. We don't have to, but um, just I want people to see how bad this is. Assalamualaikum, everybody. Welcome back to another video. I know I'm not in my usual place, in my usual corner. Um, I am not home this week, but I still wanted to come on here oh, and berries. make this video for you guys. Um, one of the questions that I have gotten the most since I converted or reverted um, is, you're okay with child marriage? So we are going to- Does remind me of Cardi B a little bit. That was a good. That was a good catch. You're okay with picking berries. You're okay. Did David Wood sees a, a random black woman? And is like, huh? It looks like Cardi B. <laughs> Talking about his mannerisms, you weirdo. <laughs> and she's Dominican, you doofus. <laughs> okay, let's go. So first things first. I think that it's very important that we. Consider the facts. So let's get into the facts. And you are more than go. welcome Here we to go. look this up. Okay. I did extensive research. Extensive on this. research. Um, so she did it just so all you want to, just so everyone knows. She did extensive research. She just told you. All right. I I encourage you to also do some research and also study the love story of our beloved prophet muhammad peace be upon him and aisha the beloved love story of this 54 year old man climbing on top of a nine-year-old prepubescent nine-year-old girl the wonderful love story okay allow me pleased with her so the first thing that i found during my research was allow me pleased with her right? wow. the first thing i found while doing my research on this Muslim website. That in the 1700s, the marriage age was 12 years old. So not nine? That's only in the 1700s. 
Mind you, this story of our beloved prophet and Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, um, took place in the seventh century. It, it is, oh my God. Um, Let's do a mean <laughs> deviation, David. You know stats. But by the way, she's thinking. 1780, there's a thousand year variation. How slow of a progression of it? But, but by the yeah. way she is thinking um it it sounds like she's going to make the she's going to come to the conclusion that by uh 3000 bc they were marrying at the age of minus 30. yeah that's it right <laughs> she, so yeah she's saying here here we are 21st century and we say you know 18 or something like this but in the 1700s they said 12. so do the math you know we, you know a couple a century <laughs> before that it would have been 11 then the century before that 10 then a century before that and no rosie um, as, uh, as, uh, as IP and as Rob have pointed out, the average age of marriage was older. What you had was for many, many centuries, 12 is considered like the starting point 12 in puberty. That's when things are starting off for marriage, uh, purposes. And that's kind of the point we're making. People seem to understand you don't do that. You don't you don't mess with a girl before she's reached puberty. And even if she gets precocious puberty, you still you still have to wait until she physically matures. So let's just let's not even talk about marriage before the girl is 12. Islam breaks it all. You don't have to wait for puberty. You definitely don't have to wait until she's 12. And what we're saying is there is kind of a uh, there's kind of a wisdom for having like don't 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 talk about marriage before this age. Don't don't do no, it. No, 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 no. David, you're misunderstanding this completely. Look, um, it goes like this. The first humans, they married at the age of one day. So on the first day, they yeah, got they yeah. married. Yeah, then, God created a sperm and an egg. Yeah, the second then, people, they it. married on the second day. Then the yeah. third people, they, they mm -hmm. married on the third day and so on. It, it just, uh, no, actually, the, the, the third people married on the fourth day. It then, you know, exponentially, it, uh, started, it it goes on like that. Of course, at some point, it's like, oh, this is going too fast. Let's, let's have some gap. So that's that's why you see um, such a difference between the 7th century and the 17th century. That's just how oh, it goes. Oh, hang on. I, I was, I was going to wait because we still have a, we still have super chats here. Uh, there's one I wanted to get to right, right. That's real perfect along those lines. Uh, not this one but i'll read this one just so i don't skip it anthony rogers went live the same time david wood went live both christian draw your own conclusions yes that is uh we can conclude that anthony is a traitor for trying to sabotage this one but here you go check this out uh which king's which king's boob um it's zabuba just so you know it's crazy mind-blowing and disgusting and disgusting to hear arguments like if she knows how to pick them berries then she's good for banging pedo apologetics Right when you said that, right when I saw, right when I saw your comment, Witch King Zabuba, is I thought we can have a new saying for uh, for the Rosie fans. Old enough to pick berries, old enough to pop cherries. <laughs> I, guys, I do not like saying things like that. I don't like saying old enough to bleed, old enough to breed. It's a mockery of your position, and yet it actually oh, is your position. It's disgusting. Oh. It's I'm, I mean it to sound disgusting because it's disgusting stuff that you guys are propagating uh, in the world. So, yes, it is pedo apologetics. Um, no, no, no. You haven't reached the age of picking berries yet. <laughs> no cherries. No, no berries. No cherries. <laughs> no cherries for you. If it was only in the 1700s that it was 12 years old, what do you think it was back in the seventh century? Well, this there is really are, it's, it's just two. That's, 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 that's really and what you think. That's really yeah, close. and there's, 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 you can't say they're wrong, even if they were banging two year olds. There's nothing wrong with that. He he, I saw it in my deep research. Well, to be fair, Daniel Kikichu said the very same thing. So don't be. Yeah, absolutely. Wild Bride came to be in the 1800s, 1843 to be exact. Wow, great research. This problem or this question about Aisha's age, may Allah be pleased with her, um, came to be in the 21st century. Um, if you look back, if you look back, uh, I'm not sure about the 20th century, but if you look. She's uh, she, she's people she, mocking it even the 1800s. Yeah. Um, and, and notice, notice what she's bringing up. Oh, but people weren't criticizing Muhammad for this back in se past century. How many people knew about this in centuries past? People aren't reading Sahih al-Bukhari. They didn't have Sahih al-Bukhari. 
M- Muslims had Sahih al Bukhari, and Muslim and, and and they're not criticizing it because criticizing Muhammad, you get your head chopped off. Other people aren't criticizing. Other people don't know. Matter of fact, I, I've I've said before when I first heard this, I thought no, there's something someone made this up. There's no there's no way Muhammad had sex with a nine year old girl. He's, he's, come on, he's he's a he's a famous religious leader. There's no way he had sex with a nine year old girl. I didn't believe it for for years until I was reading it in Sahih al Bukhari, and I was like, oh, this is in there. So anyway, the 19th century, um, there is no one talking about Aisha's age. May Allah be pleased with her. No and one knew about it. If somebody wants to go ahead and look it up and give me that information, I am more than happy to learn about it. So if somebody wants to find that, by all means, you can email it to me. So why do people bring up the marriage of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and Aisha, may Allah? Uh, I'll give you two reasons. One, you portray him as the uh, Muslim apologists uh, portray Muhammad as the greatest man who ever lived and use it as an argument. So we have to we have to address the argument and him having sex with a prepubescent girl is a factor in our assessment of his uh, of, of his uh, morality. Uh, and two, it's still an issue because because Muslims are still doing uh, practicing child marriage in parts of the world. And even in, in, in parts, in, even in places like the United States and Great Britain, Muslims like you, Rosie, are defending and promoting child marriage, th- saying, no, this is, this is actually, no, it's just your culture, but it's, there's nothing actually wrong with it. And so it's a problem. And that's why we're responding to it. But you're going to say it's Islamophobia. Watch. Be pleased with her. Um, I have learned that a lot of Islamophobes... Um, Oopsie want to kind of portray an image um, or they want to kind of put um, Muslim men and Muslim women uh, in a category. The category for Muslim men being oppressors and angry oh, Muslim David, men. David, 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 one Hold second, on. pause it. Did you know that she herself, and in fact, why brought this out to me. I didn't I didn't realize that she actually brought it up that she herself is against polygamy. Really? Well who's she yeah. to judge? I forgot. Rosie. Yeah. In Rosie. one of her videos, she herself said, uh like in a tongue in cheek way, she said, uh if you're gonna give this other woman attention, something like, well I'm too expensive or I don't know, like like I'm too much like in other words, you have to give me all the attention. You, that I, you, there's no such thing as a borrowed, shared attention. Mm, it's very racist. So that's what's interesting. It's like when she just this, when she just said that about putting Muslim men and women to categories. It's like uh, there's a little bit of hypocrisy here. Oh, um, there's there's a lot now now that you point that out because she's about to say what a I great forgot, forgot what a great that. what a great loving relationship they have and how she's envious of Muhammad's love. Wait a minute, Muhammad married a bunch of girls in addition to Aisha. Yeah, a she, lot. Yep. He had and then nine even when at he, once, and then he was, uh, and then when he had all his wives, he's still banging his sex slaves. Yep. And yep, so this is what she's defending and somehow thinks it's wrong. Weird, 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 weird. weird. Awesome. For the women, they want to portray that they somehow need to be rescued. Look at what she's saying. She's saying the reason uh, Islamophobes focus on Muhammad's relationship with Aisha is because we want to view Muslim women as oppressed and Muslim men as oppressors and then step nope. in and rescue them. You just said nope, nope AP? Nope. Correct. Correct. Those would be completely different issues. That is not my. That is not the issue with having sex with prepubescent girls. It's not. Oh, Muslim women are oppressed. That's a different issue. That's a totally yep. different issue. Yep. And that they are oppressed. I, I also want to point out one thing. Um, off, so, um, you could say, well, maybe she is. Uh, she personally is not okay with 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 polygamy, but maybe she has no problem with others uh, engaging in polygamy. The, the the very unfortunate thing is. Um, Contrary to popular knowledge, which some of these new Muslims have, or some cultural Muslims have, the woman has no say at all over whether her husband may marry other women or not. So mm-hmm. she she can say she can get married, and she can say, "Okay, I only want you to give attention to me," and the husband can say, "You know what? I don't care. I'm just going to take a second wife." Mm-hmm. That's Islamic law. Correct.
and she's defending it without re apparently realizing what the heck it teaches. Mm -hmm. Hey, look at Rob readjusting to try and look like us. <laughs> uh, the special guest going to give a uh, one minute rant in a moment. <laughs> Which is not true. But, but, but how but, about but, we but, get into the details about if the, the trajectory love continues story of our Prophet Muhammad, beautiful love story. upon him, and Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. <laughs> so, let's get into some facts about Aisha. Oh, we're getting to the facts with her. of our careful research. So, she was actually engaged before she got engaged to our beloved prophet muhammad peace that's be true him. and therefore it was okay this girl yeah therefore it's well fine. she was just so smart she was so quick-witted so passionate she had a very so strong great. character so and she not only would debate our prophet but she would debate <laughs> anyone she would debate that anybody. lived in her area she, she actually so, in her careful research, she has discovered that Aisha would debate anyone in her area. She was on modern day debates too. Yeah, she was. Yeah, she was. A, she was a great debater. She was a great debater. Um, okay. So she was this tremendous debater. It's weird, you know. You read the sources, and everyone's beating the crap out of Aisha all the time. <laughs> like constantly beating. Oh, oh, you slowed down the. You slowed down the. You slowed down our military campaign. I'm going to beat the crap out of you. Um, but she's a great debater. Everyone, great debater. By the way, she okay. said she was smart. She said she was smart. All right, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. I agree. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, mm -hmm. 2658. Narrated Abu Sa'id al-Kudri. The prophet said, isn't the witness of a woman equal to half of that of a man? The women said, yes. He said, this is because of the deficiency of a woman's mind. So women by nature are stupid. And yet Aisha was super smart. Great debater. She'd debate anybody. She'd take on all the men. Mm -hmm. According to Rosie, in her careful research, actually narrated two thousand two hundred and ten hadiths. She became a hmm. scholar, and I she narrated so many hadiths. hadiths. I, don't, I don't know what all these guys... all these hadiths about washing the semen off <laughs> Muhammad's clothes. Narrated Aisha two thirty two. I used to wash the semen off the clothes of the Prophet, and even then, I used to notice more spots on them. Yes, thank you for preserving this uh, super valuable information for us, Aisha. This is this is so weird, like uh, that they use this as a qualifier that she was very smart, uh, mm -hmm. because she told us all of the things that she did in the, in you know with Muhammad. So um, if 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 you have a if I marry a six year old girl and consummate the marriage with her when she's nine, and she then lives for uh, sixty something years while I die right after marrying her, mm -hmm. and she then uh, talks about me about all the things that we did during those few years, that apparently means that she was a very smart scholar, which is why um, mm -hmm. she was very mature. Great, yep. fantastic yep. Super smart, super smart. Who do we have with us here? I'm Can't Nicole. Hmm? My name's Nicole. Uh, oh, hello. This is supposed hey, to be. Thinking... This, is, this is supposed to be men only, Rob. And uh, what's going on? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> That's because I'm deficient by half, right? <laughs> yeah, we don't. We don't want to bring down the average IQ of the uh, of the live stream. I only, we only need one more man here, and then my testimony might be accurate. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. All right. Should we go ahead and hey, continue? Uh, oh, good. Uh, looking at this. Uh, all of this stuff that uh, Rosie's trying to do is kind of disappointing because to my knowledge, there are Muslim women within Islamic countries that are actually trying to evolve the narrative a little bit further and are trying to push away from this being the cultural norm anyway. So yep. for example, there's a lot of pushback against FGM from feminists in Islamic nations. And so if she in the West is in her hubris trying to promote this, while people in the East and, and under these sorts of regimes are actually trying to push for the opposite, it's very disappointing to see that she's not even involved in the, uh, the, you know, the movement that's trying to get away from this sort of thing instead of just saying, oh, it's totally normal, it's totally fine. Yeah, so you have organizations in Muslim countries trying to deal with problems like child marriage and things like that. And then in the meantime, you have Muslims in the West all over uh, all over the Internet promoting it and trying to make sure that it it, uh, it stays a thing and and spreads. And so this is just seems to be an ongoing issue in Islam 
let's see here. I'm telling you, she was super, super, super intelligent. So in the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, it was a very... Wait, so he took this super smart girl and uh, and then turned her, her only job into scraping the semen off his clothes? That's... That's that's so a, that's kind of a misuse ruined. of her awesome brain power. Yeah, he ruined her. Yeah. Tough time for women because women were treated like slaves or property. Uh, <laughs> source, source, Rosie, source, 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 source. And Islam made everything better. Yeah, good, good. Yeah, source, source, Rosie. I mean, keep in mind. I mean, first of all, even 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 just Muslim claims completely destroy this. Khadija was a wealthy widow. She was the one who proposed marriage to Muhammad. Yes, yes. So wait, she's a she's a she's a businesswoman. I've heard her described by Muslim apologists as an entrepreneur. So she's a wealthy businesswoman and widow. What? She she's a slave. She's going around beaten, smacked around by a slave. No. She's the one calling the shots. And she's the reason Muhammad didn't marry a bunch of other uh, women. What Muhammad understood, she is uh she has a dominant position over him because she's the uh, the rich one, and notice it, it, she's almost like a mommy figure to him because when things would go bad, he would run to her, cover me, cover me, cover me, like a little kid. Uh, so where are you getting this, Rosie? You're getting it from a terrible article. Give us the actual evidence. Give us the act. But let 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 us let her finish the point because I might want to actually destroy it here. Yes, stop interrupting. But our beloved Prophet Muhammad actually changed things when he gave the right. Um, to women to be able to decide whether or not they wanted to get married. And oh, Aisha was asked. He also gave them the right. Yeah, he said uh, uh, a virgin's uh, uh, her consent is determined by her silence. In other words, if her father says do this and she doesn't uh, she doesn't start screaming, then it's a uh, her silence is her consent to vote, which at the time was Did not allowed. She just said, I, let's um, go back to women. Oh. To be Let's able to decide one. whether or not they wanted to get married. And he also gave them the right to vote. Source. Vote for what? Exactly? You familiar <laughs> with this, AP? So so just so you know, AP, uh, 7th century Arabia was a democracy, and uh, but women didn't have the right <laughs> to vote. And then Muhammad came along and he gave them the right to vote. AP, yeah. you, you familiar with this source? Uh, no. Source of trust me, bro. Rosie, we're interested in your sources. What did on... they vote for? What were they voting for? Yeah, we want to know one, what were they voting for? And two, give us your source. Sahih al Bukhari, what? Sahih Muslim, what? What's the what's the reference here? What's the reference? But let's uh, let's see, because she's gonna say a little more. Watch this. Which at the time was not allowed. So voting, women voting at the line. Women, uh, women voting at the time wasn't allowed. Then there was this big suffrage movement, and uh, then Muhammad gave every gave all these women the right to vote in that seventh century democracy in uh in the caliphate. <laughs> the, the suffrage movement was actually inspired by Islam. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness! All right, guys, hang on. Just just give me a second here. I got to pull it up. I got to pull it up. All right. I didn't want to do this, Rosie. Didn't want to have to do this to you. Muhammad fixed things for, made things so great, so great, so great. Here you go. Here you go, Rosie. Let, let's 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 check with an actual witness here. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. You said a bunch of things. Notice I'm going to say something too, but I'll actually give you the source. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. Narrated Ikrama. Rifa, so that's a dude, married, divorced his wife, whereupon Abdur Rahman bin Azubair al-Karazi married her. So Rifa divorced her, and then she married another guy. Aisha said that the lady came wearing a green veil and complained to hi complained to her, complained to Aisha of her husband and showed her a green spot on her skin caused by beating. It was the habit of the ladies to support each other. Why would the ladies need to support each other when they had the support of Islam and the Muslim community? So when Allah's messenger came, Aisha said, I have not seen any woman suffering as much as the believing women look. Her skin is greener than her clothes. This woman's skin was green from being beaten by her husband. The Mus it was up to the Muslim women to try and support each other and defend each other. Aisha, long story short, because we could go through this. We could go through the entire passage. We've gone through it in previous shows. 
But um, long story short, Muhammad rebukes the woman for being a bad wife, not the man for beating her until her skin turned green. So you don't beat her. I mean, uh, so Ma, so the woman's husband beat her until her skin turned green. Our prophet Muhammad. Beat her until her skin turned green. Muhammad condemns her for being a bad wife. And what does, but the key here, the entire point of bringing that up was Aisha, Aisha, wait, 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 uh, AP, uh, who did, uh, who did Rosie say is basically the smartest woman in Arabia? Aisha? Didn't she say she's super duper smart? Extremely smart. So yeah, Aisha's really super duper duper smart. She's so smart, she can she debates everyone. She's just debating the whole town. She'll go toe to toe with anyone. Aisha, she the smartest the girl. Keep in mind, she's the smartest girl in a culture where women are intellectually deficient. Their testimony is half as valuable as a man because they're so stupid, according to Muhammad. Uh, but Aisha, she's the brainiac of the bunch. And Aisha, super genius girl that she is, in her expert opinion, and who would be who would be a better expert than the smartest woman around? who learned Islam from Muhammad himself as his beloved child bride, who would be a better authority on the on the actual status of women in the 7th century than Aisha? What did she say, Rosie? Aisha, the woman you've described as super smart and super loving a relationship, how does she describe what happened to women because of Islam? She said she has not seen any woman suffering as much as the believing women. In other words, pagan women were treated better by their husbands than Muslim women. That's Aisha. What's hmm. your source? What's your source on saying that Muslim women were treated so much better than pagan women? Where? What's your source? I'll, 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 way, I'll tell you some horrible lying article on the, on the internet written by some Dawah Gandis who lies compulsively in order to convince people like you because he knows you'll believe whatever he says. That's where you got it from. So we're going to Aisha, who, according to you, should be the ideal uh, witness of, of any trial on what it was actually like. She says one thing. You say the exact opposite, not based on anything you got from Muhammad or Aisha or any of the early Muslim sources, based on something you read in an article by the biggest bunch of liars I've ever seen in my life. And what's amazing is even after hearing this, even after hearing this, you'll say, well, who cares what Aisha said? I'm believing this article I read by this liar. That's what Islam has done to you. Interesting. Good, good. Uh, good, Rob. Oh, and how interesting. Pagans like the Mayans, right? They had a logical common sense to marry around 16 up to 20, according to anthropology data. Hmm. Interesting. Aisha was on point with something with that. Aisha was serious. I mean, can, I mean, can you imagine that? This is the girl who knows it best. And according to, um, according to Rosie here, smartest girl around. She's the only one who's smart as the guys. All the other women are, are way dumber. And her expert opinion is Islam taught men to treat women more horribly than paganism did. Interesting. Interesting. And Tell also us. because this area had already been intro like introduced to Christianity as well. As yep. Christianity spread, like we do see increase in female disciples and mm -hmm. uh, also re reduction on uh, deaths by exposure for infants, mm -hmm. thanks to Christian orphanages and so forth, which also, by the way, Islam uh, banned orphanage uh, and orphans and so forth like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, pretty, pretty delusional here, Rosie, we have to say peace be upon him, actually promised that anyone who disciplined their daughters well, well, would enter paradise. But anyways, let's... That includes beating them until their skin turns green, but that's your wives, not your daughters. To the store. Uh, and, 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 and notice if Rosie wants to, wants to make that claim, then Abu Bakr uh, would beat Aisha even when she was married. Can you, I mean... I can't imagine me sitting there doing nothing if my wife's dad came over and started beating her in front of me. Yeah, that like, was normal. You, you, you're, 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 you're not. <laughs> you're, you're, no one's going to put their hand on my wife around me. And yet, Abu Bakr would beat Aisha right in front of right in front of Muhammad after after 
she was married to Muhammad. Interesting stuff. But uh, oh, so Abu Bakr definitely going to paradise because uh, he beat Aisha. Yeah, Muhammad rewarded, so him, rewarded him by saying he's mm-hmm. the he's the absolute best. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that make that guy caliph. Um, our prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not the one who talks about his marriage and his love story. The story actually comes from. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. Is she really getting romantic about this right now? This She's is, get. She gets very. This is the part I wanted to get to. She gets very extremely disturbing romantic. To watch yeah. right now. Oh. It's so yo. She gets to the point where she says, I wish I had a relationship like that. Oh it is the creepiest thing in the history of humanity. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, my goodness. Uh, all right. And the way that she spoke about her love about. Washing the semen off his clothes and scratching the semen off his clothes and scraping the semen off his clothes so he could go to hug it out with all his Muslim brothers in the mosque. <laughs> I want a relationship like that. For our beloved prophet and the way that she spoke about the love that our beloved prophet had for her was just something so beautiful. There is no way. And I mean, no way Zero. that this girl was forced to marry our beloved prophet. All right. All right. Aisha, all may right, Allah so, be pleased. Right. What, 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 what do you mean? What does she mean by forced marriage? All right. All right. So um, I will. <laughs> I feel terrible uh, making this analogy here or, or, or presenting this hypothetical. But uh, let's say I'm some random creep, right? And I walk around. Um, you are looking for looking for um you know girls that walk around by themselves outside and i found some four-year-old girl and i'm like well i really like this one so i approach her and slowly convince her that i'm a good guy and that i want to take her home and make her uh, you know and 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 make her very happy and all of that she comes with me uh i i trick her into it she loves me and over the years uh i i treat her as my as my partner at home of course she's missing meanwhile the parents don't know where she is that she's never found but I, but she stays with me, uh, and after 10, 15 years, it comes out that she has been living with me this whole time, this entire time. She doesn't even know what outside looks like anymore because I just treated her like this, like my little uh, pet at home. But when you ask her, wow, she was just so happy. She still mm-hmm. is very happy. Yeah. She loves this. She's, this is such a beautiful relationship. And I did nothing but be kind to her. And uh, when people finally take her, when the police comes and all the all the authorities come and they take her, they're like, they're like, oh my God, you must have experienced so such horror. And she says, no, 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 no. He was so kind to me. We had a beautiful time together. I guess, I guess by that standard then, since she seems very happy and everything seems quite good and quite romantic, that means everything is all right, right? Yeah, so we can ignore, okay. we, let's just ignore the fact that Aisha herself says that Muslim women were treated worse than pagan women, right? Let's ignore that fact and just pretend it was all uh, peaches and cream and that everything was uh, wonderful. What, what AP's pointing out is following the exact same reasoning following the exact same reasoning of Rosie here, you'd have to say. So keep in mind, there, there, are, uh, there are pedophiles and stuff who will lock a little kid in a cage, but lots of pedophiles are just groomers. They'll get the kid to think that they're in, a, they're in love together and so on. So following Rosie, suppose a, you catch a 54-year-old man and he's having sex with a nine-year-old girl and you ask the nine-year-old girl, hey, nine-year-old girl, What's this guy been doing having sex with you? And she goes, no, what are you talking about? He buys me candy and he buys me dolls and it's just so great. She'd have to say, that's all fine. That's all wonderful. What a beautiful relationship. All relationships should be that beautiful. Why can't I have a relationship so beautiful as the one between that uh, filthy old man banging that little girl? But, you know, she doesn't know any better. That's what she's saying right now. This is yeah, exactly. I, I keep, and she's saying this because why? Why is she saying this? No one else is saying this. There's one group that's saying this. Why is she saying it? She's saying it to defend Muhammad because he, he, he had sex with a little girl. This is, this is crazy she stuff. talked a lot Sick. about how much they enjoyed uh, their meals together and how our beloved prophet would only enjoy his meals if he was sitting next to her. Oh, and actually, you, you, one of my favorite... What? I had this whole night, this whole live stream so far until this point... I had a, a lot of respect for Rosie here. It was and it was just uh, against saying anything mean about her. But uh, 
I don't know. After this, her romanticizing of this whole situation. Yeah, I guess I, it's, it's pretty, pretty it all all disappeared entirely. Oh, it's about to get worse. Watch this, watch this, watch this. It's about to get worse. It's about to get worse. Ready? Parts of the story. And this is like so small, but to me, it's just uh, it's so, uh, it's so uh, heartfelt for uh, me. Uh, um, it's the fact that they would drink out of the same cup mm -hmm. and our prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, would really pay attention to where Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, would place her lips on the cup so that he could place his lips on the exact same place. To me, that is just so beautiful. So yeah. another- So if Jeffrey Epstein was uh, putting his mouth in the same place of a cup as uh, you know, the 14 year old he's banging or whatever, then uh, she would think this is the most romantic thing ever and uh, Jeffrey Epstein, what a guy. Uh, by the way, uh, you're about to see a bunch of what she's saying is total nonsense, but just to grant everything, notice. Guys, there are pedophiles who just are really, really attracted to little girls and just absolutely fall in love with the little girls. And so their goals as pedophiles is to get these little girls to fall in love back. And, oh, he's putting his mouth on the exact same spot of the cup as me. It's true love and so romantic that this guy who's old enough to be her great grandfather is so in love with her. Why can't I have a relationship like that? Wow, 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 wow. But watch, watch. It's about to get better. And at some, po at some point, I will... Uh, I will go ahead and uh, wreck something that she's saying. We'll see. Her favorite part of mine is when Aisha, may Allah be pleased with the her, other favorite part. asked our beloved prophet how much or how he would express um, his love for her. And he said it was like a strong binding knot. Like so a strong binding pull, knot. The stronger it gets. I think Aisha, it may Allah was... be pleased with her. Huh? It was an ionic bond. It's like an ionic so bond. All right, all right. It was salty. And the saltier, the better. Uh. Uh. Okay. So, a a AP, AP, you you familiar with this? This uh. Oh, my love. My love for him and his love for me is like a knot. I asked him, I asked him, and he said, our love is like a knot and you pull on it and it uh, gets even stronger. <laughs> uh, that, that doesn't sound like an authentic story. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, you, you don't recall that from uh, Bukhari and Muslim and uh, Sinan Abu Daud and so on? Nope. Yeah, no one does. <laughs> gotta do it. Gotta do it. Letting her slide in a bunch of nonsense, just just granting is, stuff, is there, granting nonsense for the sake of uh, Let's see. So here is a uh, Toronto Dawa, which uh, examines some reliability of some hadith here. Uh, kind of tiny there, but from that which has become so. He's at, so notice at the top, it's the fa <laughs> the false narration on Aisha asking, "How is your love for me?" Oh, to the oh. prophet. Uh, what's that? From that which has become widespread is the following. Once Aisha asked the prophet, uh, how is your love for me? Like the rope's knot, he replied, indicating that it is strong and secure. And time after time thereafter, she would ask him, how is the knot? And he would reply, in the same condition. Uh, end quote. After looking, okay, so they, they did the research on this because this is circulating uh, for Dawa purposes and whatever uh, whatever article she read, because she obviously didn't get this from Bukhari or anything. Uh, whatever. Don't forget, she read his extensive research, right? Yeah, her extensive research, what she found in her extensive research. Uh, th th this, so this, this gets circulated and then eventually Muslims will say, where are you talking about? Uh, so right here after end quote. After looking, I couldn't find Imam Albani's ruling on its authenticity, but Imam blah, blah, blah mentioned that this narration is false and that all of the narrators between his sheikh and Imam Malik are weak, except for Imam Ash shafi as he mentioned, blah, blah, blah. And some of the routes, some of the routes even have a fabricator, while other routes have an unknown, have unknown narrators or other routes have uh, different weaknesses, which are severe. Al Fatani said it is a false hadith which has in it weak narrators. This is funny, right? Because you, you and I, for example, we are um, we, we are familiar with the with hadiths, and to us, um, when we hear a narration like this, just the language. Like me and the sense oh, sorry, it's, 
just the language of it it's, it sounds very clearly like a um like a fictional narrative of mm-hmm. Muhammad because it, it 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 just has a thing to it it just has a I don't know what you call it, but a vibe to it. It's just that's yep. not how Muhammad actually authentically speaks. Uh, but this, it's very interesting that um, this is one of her favorite things. This just shows that she doesn't actually research. She just. No, what are you talking about? She specifically people. said over and over again that she did all this research, AP. <laughs> and so, guys, that is interesting. What What amounts to research, according to Rosie? going to some awful website and not bothering to look up anything she's reading. This is why she is like ideal. This is who you want as a, as a, if, if you're in the Dawah crowd, these are the people you want spreading Islam. And that's why it's become so popular on TikTok and so on. Uh, just get someone like this, mindlessly agree with anything they say, and then they'll spread it to their followers and it never crosses anyone's mind to look up anything. That's how Islam spreads. Uh-huh. Nothing wrong with this. That she would actually go and keep asking our beloved prophet how that knot was. Yeah, and that fake hadith. Um, since that's the way that he would describe his How's, how's the knot in that fake and hadith? he would say, it is as strong as the first day you asked. Uh, oh, how uh, beautiful. Uh, and he showed me a lot of things <laughs> with her. Would describe our beloved prophet Muhammad as... Someone who was very attentive to his family. He would serve his family. And any time... And bang his family. <laughs> what are you laughing at? ...that anybody asked our beloved prophet who was the most beloved to his heart. He would always, <laughs> always say, Aisha. The little one. I love the little one most. I have the old ones. I have the regular ones. I have the big this ones. Actually, I have the small ones. And my favorite is their little girl. Their little, little girl. This actually makes me sick. I don't know. This is just... This it's is disgusting, just, right? It's absolutely disgusting. This is too much. I mean, her, her being... She's her glorifying... Being, this, she's this glorifying kind of feeling. romanticizing of this thing like... Oh, oh, and, and you know what? I read about Jeffrey Epstein. He was such a romantic, such a wonderful guy and so loving and all the people that he lured in and, and he, he was just so caring and so good to them. <laughs> and I read this story called Lolita and it was just so romantic about a man's relationship with this little girl. Oh, oh why can't I have that relationship? Oh, ah. What is this? I mean, guys, I mean, this, this is what... <laughs> Like we sit here and discuss this stuff and we, you know, we can joke around and we can examine arguments. At the end of the day, these are people who are like glorifying pedophilia and and saying it's the most wonderful thing ever. Yep. But that's my point about the legal system. I mean, remember earlier when I asked a question about Daniel Hickachu, it's in that debate he had with IP. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Very, very creepy. And here she is, young... Muslim woman glorifying to her fans how just how absolutely wonderful it can be for a little girl, little prepubescent girl, to have sex with a a groomer, a grown up o- old man groomer, and it's so yes. wonderful. May Allah be pleased. With Before her. our beloved Prophet Muhammad, oh, what was that? Is what she's saying is the opposite of the direction the scholars are trying to take this. Like we've got um, the. Christian commentary on the Quran, and uh, there's a section on women in the Quran by Linda Darwish, separate from the original author here, but quoted. And they're basically saying, uh, Amina Wadud Mushseen, an African-American feminist Muslim academic, suggests three types of interpretation regarding women in the Quran, traditional, reactive, and holistic. Traditional readings reflect a patriarchal construction. Reactive readings vindicate an externally imposed feminist construction a holistic reading, Musin's preference, places the female experience at the center of interpretation while ignoring the exegetical tradition. The premise of Musin's approach is that the commonly perceived problem of, wis- of women in Islam is not due to the Quran itself, but to the application of a faulty male-centered hermeneutic imposed upon the text. The aim of the holistic approach is to unread these patriarchal narratives. Meaning, if they want feminism in Islam, they have to ignore the text or completely rewrite the hermeneutic to suit themselves. Mm. So 
while Rosie is defending this position that she's kind of made up to defend the actual text, the scholars are saying, no, no, we, the text is not going to help us here. We're going to have to take a different route to make things feminism, like to make feminism relevant in Islam. Mm -hmm. And it's this really weird situation where So someone like Kenny Bomer, and I'll debate, you know, I debated Kenny Bomer on this, and he's arguing, as many Muslims have, that, nope, I, I, that's a made-up thing. Aisha uh, wasn't nine. She was much older. And so on the one hand, you want to say, no, that's not what your sources say. Deal with the actual text. But on the other hand, you kind of, I'm always kind of rooting for the guys, like, please, guys, come up with some great case that this is all made up. Please, I'm begging you, come up with something to come up with an alternative interpretation of Surah 65 verse 4 and come up with some explanation of how um, Muhammad didn't actually do this so that this will not be an ongoing problem. And so kind of rooting for those guys. But at the same time, you got to you, you got to you got to correct them. And it's just weird. It's like, OK, I can I'm rooting for the Dawa guys in the sense that they're at least acknowledging that this is true. And so they're you know, some of them are at least telling the truth about some of the stuff in there. Uh, but also rooting for the reformers who want to change. I don't know. It's just a rough, creepy situation. Thank you, Muhammad, for putting the world in this position right now. Beautiful. Peace be upon him. Past. His final words were. Treat. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. These are his final words. <laughs> okay. She just said. She just Wait, said these are. His she just said these are these are his final words. She, these are Muhammad's final words. Let's see. Here we go. For our beloved prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, passed. His final words were. His final words. <laughs> treat women with kindness. Treat oh women God. with kindness. Have what? fear of Allah in relation to them, and says make who? sure you want talk? well for them. Who how says that? Is that? How beautiful is I that? How beautiful is that? How, how beautiful is that? This, those were Muhammad's last words. Did you know that? They were Muhammad's last where, words. Where where in the world did she read this? Because, I will uh, show you. I will show you Muhammad's last words, AP. You ready? I read a, I read a completely different narrative of what his final words were. I will it, refute it, it, you. I will destroy you right now. You're saying you read a completely ahead. different account? Go ahead. Go ahead. Prepare to be wrecked, AP. Here you go. Islam Q&A. So this is a, this is a uh, Muslim scholar's website. Uh, Islam Q&A, question, what were the last words of the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, before he bade farewell to this world? So here, AP, you're about to be destroyed because you're questioning whether that, those were actually Muhammad's last words. Now, there are some disputes about what his last words were, but they go through all the options here. We'll sort of speed through this. Praise be to Allah, the last words of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, before he bade farewell to this world, were Allah with the higher companions. Hmm. Okay. Uh, interesting. Um, so not that, uh, the last words of the prophet. So Magazi and his Sahih, the last words of the prophet, uh, 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 what I'm reading, I'll put kind of at the top here. So, cause I'm going to kind of skim through this. The last words of the prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him were, uh, where he quoted the Hadith of Aisha who said when the prophet was healthy, he used to say no soul of a prophet is taken until he has been shown his place in paradise. And then he is given the choice. All right. When the death of uh, when the death of when death approached him, his head was on my thigh. He became unconscious and then recovered consciousness. He then looked at the ceiling of the house and said, "Oh Allah, with the highest companions." I said to myself, "He is not going to choose to stay with us." Then I understood what he meant. Huh? The last words he spoke were, "Oh Allah, with the highest companions." Huh? That's interesting. But we have some com with some competition. So now you're going to get where he uh, starts talking about uh, women. Narrated by Bukhari and Muslim. There's a report narrated by Ahmed from the Haditha, blah, 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 who said that the last words of the Prophet were, expel the Jews of the Hijaz and the Najran from the Arabian Peninsula. Huh. That's interesting. So get rid of, uh, that's weird. And know that the most evil of people are those who took the graves of their prophets as places of worship. So that's a criticism of Christians and Jews. So those were his last words, uh, calling... Uh, for, to expel Jews and Christians from the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, let's go a little farther. The last words that the Messenger of Allah spoke were the prayer, the prayer, and fear Allah with regard to those whom your right hands possess. <laughs> fear Allah with regard to those. So these are your slave girls. Uh, th this was classed as Sahih by Al Albani. Hmm. Anything else? 
what's this one note, blah, 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 said the reason why these, oh, Allah, higher companions, last words, darn. Okay, well, all right, AP, it seems like Islam QA has not confirmed what Rosie said. So I'm not sure who we're supposed to go with here, Rosie or the Islamic scholars. Obviously, uh, Rosie is a yeah, Rosie. better authority than authority than. Islam yeah, she Q. she did all this. She did all this research, so she did all this research, so she must know what she's talking about. All right, we do want to. Uh, we definitely want to uh, wrap up in the next couple minutes. So just watch a little bit more of this. Definitely As won't get to all this. Everybody, welcome back oh, to another video. Please all that time for new converts or announcement kind of um and this is for the muslim where were we can love me yeah, I'm sure. oh, fear yes. of allah in relation to them and may always always say aisha may allah be pleased with before her. our beloved prophet muhammad peace be upon him passed oh, his final words his last were, words which we just read treat women with kindness Treat women with kindness. Have fear His last words before he died, according to this website, are Fear of Allah in relation to them and make sure you want well for them. Oh, How beautiful man. is that? I so think beautiful. that out of all of the stories that I have read, which I have a lot more to read still, um, but I think this is one stories. of my favorite stories. Um, and I pray that Allah may give me a love one day when the time is right um he gives me somebody who can love me the way that prophet muhammad peace be upon him loved aisha uh, uh, Are you kidding that I, I want a uh, relation i want a relationship like the beautiful loving relationship between a 54 year old man and a nine-year-old girl uh, uh. it's a little too late for that rosie you're a little too old <laughs> So from the way that Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, describes their beautiful love story. Beautiful love story. To me, there is no way that she could have been forced to marry our beloved prophet. There was no, she was completely willing when she was, when the marriage was arranged, when she was a six year old, she was, you know, there, there's no way she was forced into that. She definitely was in full, uh, she, she definitely had her full adult cognitive faculties and she decided uh, when it was arranged by her father, when her marriage was arranged by her father with Muhammad, she wasn't forced into anything. No, she was free to, she was free to walk away. There's no way her dad who beat her all the time uh, would have uh, just beaten her and told her to do what he wants. Isn't no it also question. telling that she had severe alopecia and lost all her hair, according to some hadith? If she lost all her hair, alopecia is often brought on by high stress levels. Yeah. So as a six-year-old, mm -hmm. knowing what sort of a relationship you're going to, or not part knowing, mm -hmm. having extreme stress, losing all her hair, obviously the that's that also is fairly telling to her sort of yeah, so, state. Yeah. So for anyone who uh, yeah, anyone who's not familiar with what we're talking about, there's there's the sources, and this may actually have played a role in uh, even why you know people are um, why Muhammad was waiting to consummate the marriage, but uh, her hair her hair fell out at some point, and uh, so it says she she got sick and her hair fell out, but. Uh, that can just be the result of stress. In other words, she could have been actually panicking to the point of her hair falling out um, based on her marriage with this guy. Uh, keep, keep in mind that there is something definitely creepy, everyone, in, in all of this with uh, Muhammad uh, saying that, you know, Aisha is his favorite and he just wanted to be with Aisha over and over again. We see the same thing with, with Muhammad's other companions and that when one of his... Uh, one of his followers came to him and said, hey, I'm getting married. Muhammad said, uh, hey, who are you marrying? And he said, I'm marrying a, an adult woman. And Muhammad said, what? Why don't you like the virgins and fondling them? And so there's something there's something that he regarded as superior about a little girl in all of this. And uh, Rosie loves it. Rosie says, oh, why can't I have that? That would be great. No needing rescue. It was simply a beautiful, beautiful love story. love story. I truly enjoyed this story. And before I end this video, I wanted to make this announcement kind of, um, and this is for the Muslim community. Uh, I have been receiving so many comments. There are 
lots and lots of beautiful comments, which I truly appreciate. And there have been some comments that have not. Oh, anyway, uh, I, has, yeah, we, has she been getting marriage proposals from Muslims? So, yeah. Well, here she, she here she here she's complaining, which we see in the other we see in some of the other videos of the TikTok uh, reverts. Uh, she complains that Muslims are uh, basically telling her what to do, and she's getting lots of criticism. <laughs> She's like, oh, you need to do this. Oh, you shouldn't be doing that. Why are you wearing makeup? And well, they're telling her what you to chose do. the wrong religion if you're so bothered yeah. by that. Yeah, yeah. So we can go ahead and we can go ahead and uh, we can go ahead and cut that off there. Um, all right, guys, we've been going. We've been going four hours. There are still a bunch of super chats. There's sorry. There's no way we're going to go through these because uh, well, we've got some. I don't want this to be a six-hour live stream. Four hours. Four hours is longer than 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 we wanted uh you guys see, are, a, the, ap live streams really reads all the super chats atheist david wood live streams says there is no time left christian to all your own conclusions <laughs> <laughs> ap doesn't care uh <laughs> despite everything that pours out of her mouth imagine the high-pitched shrieking that emanates from this little zoomer over the subject of how western civilization is purely evil oppressive sexist patriarchal rape culture to be uh, dismantled. Yeah, again, I haven't seen anything from her except these two videos, so I would wonder if in her other video she's critical of other cultures. That would be uh, one of life's great mysteries. Um, all right, any uh, any final thoughts on all of, on all of this? Yeah, I, mean, I, I think I, that... I, go ahead. Least, I, sorry. I think that at the very least um, she should be exposed to um, feminist Muslims themselves from the East who are actually trying to undo what she is is trying to promote because i know that we're doing islamic polemics and like i guess the situation would be ideal if people would just leave islam because it's awful but in the re in you know in reality that's not going to happen overnight so until then it would be best if that we leaned into like you know trying to expose or or expose this sort of a reaction to people who are actually trying to undo it who are within the paradigm because out looking outside that paradigm in yeah we can try and say yeah like this is wrong etc but we really need to have somebody inside the paradigm saying yeah this is also wrong to try and reduce the effects of these terrible doctrines as fast as possible hmm. yeah and that's that's part of the reason for she asked she started off saying oh and what why do people talk about this why is this even an issue <laughs> one of the reasons for criticizing child marriage in Islam is so that enough Muslims become embarrassed by it so that they make the changes and so that this becomes not a thing anymore. But the, the, the problem is, as, fa as fast as we're trying to uh, expose this so that so that you can have people who say, OK, guys, we need to we need to stop this stuff and it needs to stop in Yemen and uh, we need to get past this, uh, even even if they thought even if they wanted to be some sort of uh, relativist in a even if they wanted to avoid presentism and judging the past by the standards uh, you could say okay guys we're just going to let everyone slide before them but right now we have greater knowledge and we know that this is actually bad for girls so we need to stop it uh yes, but as, as yeah as, as, no, i'm just saying yeah i'm just saying as fast like, as we're exposing the it they're defending you it muslims, you can embarrass the western muslims but the eastern muslims will not be embarrassed by this so the best way to do it is to have the people who have been actually affected by it and it's not that they're embarrassed by it but they're actually hurt by it like very physically very hurt by it mm -hmm. and they're trying to undo it from their own angle so mm -hmm. either way works but it would be great to have to see it basically abolished so for both tactics are best this kind of promotion of rosies is inappropriate no matter which way you go from within the paradigm from without the paradigm it, it needs to go it needs to stop yeah so guys need to uh need to be blasting away when people are making videos uh defending child marriage because at the end of the day we're trying to fix a problem that uh that affects young girls and this is just sick stuff and, and not just young girls i mean as, as long as people notice there's a you can have pedophiles you can have a pedophile general that pedophile has to keep it like quiet you can't tell everyone that you're a pedophile you're gonna you're gonna go to jail or, or just get beaten or something like that uh but anyway people aren't just gonna let you run around being a pedophile islam just thinks it's completely okay so you just can't you can't let that one slide um AP, any final thoughts here? I mean, it's sad. Um, I was initially... What's up with your hair, dude? I'm not talking to you. He tried to do his hair exactly like you, AP, to copy you. <laughs> I just got a shower. I freshened up. 
And now your hair looks exactly like AP. I need to go pick some berries and sip on some, and then I'll talk about this. Well, yeah, as I was Austin, saying, uh, <laughs> so initially I had respect for her and thought, yeah, okay, you know, everything seems cool. It's, it seems all nice. But then that part came in where she started being totally romantic about yeah. um, the child marriage to pedophilia and all of that. And I just, I don't know how to, after that part, still respect her in any way. It's just disgusting. Yeah. And uh, I guess I that's mean, really telling of competitive dissonance. You either lean into it and go, oh, you know what? You know what? That's actually acceptable. Or you lean away from it and go, you know what? This is actually disgusting. I don't think it's real or like yeah. realistic. Yeah. And think about, I mean, think about how really sick and evil this is in that if you're a Muslim man and you really want to marry a little girl and you want to encourage other people, what do you do? Hey guys, watch this video by Rosie. She says it's great. Hey you, hey my friend. Yeah, yeah, you got a you got a young daughter? I want you to watch this video with your young daughter and, uh, and then I'm going to have a proposal for you afterwards. It's like it's 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 making it acceptable within the within the community. I mean, it's already acceptable. We're trying to make it less acceptable. They're trying to make it more acceptable and just totally totally normal. Exactly. That That's is creepy, creepy, evil stuff. So, Rosie, I don't think you set out with bad intentions or anything here, but uh, I think you're, you, you need to be thinking about your religion. So you converted to Islam. I, I, I'm sure you uh, have some reasons. Maybe we'll, go, maybe we'll go through those reasons. Rosie, look, side note, you're welcome to join us here. You're welcome to join us during Absolutely. a live stream and discuss this. And you may be thinking, ah, uh, you know, I'm new. I just, uh, you know, my research is only a couple of articles or something like that. Fine. You can bring any Muslim scholar on the planet, your favorite Muslim scholar, bring him with you. And we'll all have a big discussion about this. And we, we can, uh, we can get to the bottom of this. Uh, happy, happy, happy to uh, have that discussion with you. Uh, but so based on what we've seen, your level of research is going to horrible, horrible, um, articles by lying dawagandis and then not researching anything they're telling you even slightly or critically. And this is what you get. And if you, if you go that route, what, what, what's the, what's the end result? You'll be on YouTube defending child marriage and promoting child marriage and getting young girls to think that it's a great thing to do that being a little girl married to some, uh, creepy old heaven's gate looking dude is, uh, is a good idea. And yeah, uh, that's sit, just sit back, review what you are doing. Um, Reevaluate your life's choices is what we're saying. Go ahead. Have a look at what in the world you are promoting and stop um, doing these ridiculous things that you might regret in the future when you wake up to what kind of a horrible worldview it is that you are justifying here and normalizing. Yeah, do you really want to go down in history as the world's second most important leading defender of pedophilia after Daniel Hukikachi. <laughs> Is that Good what you point. want? Hey, Rob, any final, any final thoughts? Cause you were uh, absent when I asked for final thoughts. Uh, no, <laughs> I was going to say something, but it, it, it was going to be pretty mean. Mm, yeah. It was, it was in, yeah. Well, yeah, I started. I started thinking thinking we're going to be nice, but yeah, I, I agree with AP. This is this is bad. This is bad stuff. Uh, encouraging this stuff. This is sick. I mean, stuff. I mean, okay. Let me let me just let me just cushion it. I am disappointed in her choice to go in this direction initially. So Nicole and I actually did engage with her on my channel like what four months ago. Something, something like that. that. Back then, she was more reasonable, even though it was completely bonkers, but more reasonable. For her to go down this trajectory, you know, her extensive research, uh, which, as Nicole just pointed out a moment ago, can lead to a lot of harm, especially for children. I'm, I'm bringing it back, and I mean this with all due respect, I'm bringing this back to the reason why she converted, and that is, according to her testmates, it's the passing of a child. Now, that's horrible. I'm not against the comfort that she was given with respect to her friend that introduced that particular hadith and all that. But what I was going to say was don't use now in light of all this, don't use Islam as a scapegoat to find comfort for the passing of your child. Initially, I was debating whether to say that, but I'm also thinking about the welfare of children in this context and for her to just be so blase about it, like, you know, this, this romantic romanticizing about Muhammad 
also kissing the same spot of the cup as Aisha did. It's sick. I mean, as a, as a, as a mother, she should know better. I mean, obviously, I, you know, her child has passed, but she, either way, she became a mom, mm -hmm. and she should know better. Yep. Yep. And I think that's a good way to uh, wrap up again, guys. Uh, sorry I didn't get to... Uh, we normally try to go through all or as many as we can of the super chats, but towards, you know, after we went through the first video, it was kind of go through all the super chats or get through that second video. And I didn't want to do a second, uh, I didn't want to do a second show on this, but I wanted to show that she is actually glorifying and praising this. And that's bad. And you just have to wonder why so many people who go into Dawa, I mean, remember Sneeko. When it, when it was brought up, he said, yeah, child marriage, oh, gross, evil. And then yeah. it was just like, it was a month or two later after it became a Muslim. Then, you know, after rethinking this and doing my research, I've decided that there's nothing wrong with child marriage. It's like, that, it's like, it's like part of the initiation. Hey, now you're a Muslim. Now you worship the one true God, Allah. What now? Oh, well, now you start defending child marriage. What is and it? David, do you want to bridge that? Do you want to bridge that to the gospel where we have Jesus telling a 12 year old girl, like, get up little lamb? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Talitha Kum is the Aramaic. Yep, calls her calls her little girl, not a fully grown woman capable of being married. Well, li little lamb, even to to really soften it even further than just little girl, like it's a lamb, is the pure and innocent, that sort of an imagery. Yeah, and uh, for the Hikikachu crowd, she's like a grandmother. <laughs> Not, 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 not joking. Not joking. <laughs> no, no, hey, you're, no. Yeah, you're, I mean, you're, hey, you're marrying this, uh, you know, this, this uh, four-year-old. By the time the four-year-old has a kid, then that four-year, you know, that four-year-old is five. She has, she's had, she got a baby now, and so Does, she's a mom. And then by the David, time she's ten, she's a grandma. In David's defense, he's using log scales over here, all right? The natural log system. So I'm using the Daniel log system. <laughs> the Daniel Hakika log system. All right, everyone. Well, there's never been a better time to close out with this song. Ain't gonna follow no child molester, sex offender, private pretender. Ain't gonna follow no child molester. Islam's not for me. Islam's not for me. Islam's not for me. Catch y'all next time.